beloved one, I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed and stay blessed. We are the ones who have deceived you. Pastors, pastors are the ones who have deceived sincerely and innocently, but very wrongly. And we must admit it. I told you many pastors do not have financial literacy. Why? Because all we do is copy and paste. I go for a pastor's conference. I hear what a man of God I honor says. And you see, the fact that you are... Um, the wealth of ministers is, is, is a very special case in Nigeria because a man as a pastor may not have financial intelligence and yet be rich because of the way ministry is done. Are you getting the point? He is fulfilling the law although he does not know it, so he is rich. And he thinks the reason why he is rich is just because he's anointed. No, sir. This is the reason. So many people are under pressure. If I must be rich like my daddy or papa, I must be a pastor. Right? So there are so many people who are not called into the fivefold ministry, racing to make sure they start churches in a hope that if I have plenty members, imagine what it will translate to. Let me tell you something funny that someone told me. I think it was a year or two ago. We were somewhere and I paid for something and the person looked at me. He said, man of God, you are the people enjoying ministry. See all the plenty crowd in Koinonia. You see, you see why he's poor? Because in his mind, he's saying, Abba, everybody prophets of everybody gives you ten ten thousand or one one thousand you see that on koinonia database there are about six thousand five hundred people multiply that one times even one one this is how poor people think they just say kai apostle tell us the truth you are enjoying see <laughs> if that's what you are thinking how much have you given me how much have you given me your personal seed? No, that's wrong. That's not how you think. That's not the reason why men of God are prosperous. Multiple streams of income. Let's go to the business of the night. Are you blessed? Yes. Genesis chapter 2. So Sasa ki buchi Sasa ki buchi Sing it one more time Sasa ki buchi Verse 10. Genesis 2 verse 10. I want to show you a mystery. May God open your eyes tonight in the name of Jesus. 
help us media is possible genesis 2 verse 10 only you are worthy everyone read and a river went out of eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and it became what four next verse the name of the first was Pishon, that which is that which compassed the whole land of Havilah, where there is what? Stop. The Bible says, look at me. From Eden there was one river. And then it said the river parted itself into four streams. And it started telling us that every one of the streams had a particular treasure. In one of it, there was gold. And the Bible says the gold is good. He started listing precious metals and so on and so forth. Are you getting my point now? So, one river parting itself into four streams. A particular man of God said this and I believe so much. The secret to oceanic wealth is having multiple streams of income. A stream can dry, but an ocean never dries. Never dries. An ocean never dries. A little stream can dry, but an ocean will never dry. This from scripture becomes for us a revelation into constructively building a robust, recession-proof financial life, multiple streams of income. The greatest limitation with the Nigerian economy and the Nigerian citizens generally is the mindset that operates a single stream of income and that single stream of income is usually our job job that job mindset is one of the greatest financial stumbling block in my opinion that's what has stopped many people so an average young man in Nigeria operating under the 6334 system you know completes his secondary education and then goes to the university to study for maybe four five six years or whatever and then may add a master's or whatever it is and the moment he graduates the first thing in his mind now please don't get me wrong just follow me i'm not against job but the first thing is his, in his mind is to be employed it's not his fault it's not her fault the system designed you that way are you getting me so the moment you finish, the first question elderly people ask you is, uh -uh, you are finished now. You say, yes. Say, so where are you working? Not what are you producing? Not are you deploying your potentials? Where are you working? So it trains you to serve. It trains you to work. Now the trouble is this. The average salary of a young graduate or even somebody that is working well in Nigeria ranges within 50 to 100,000. Is that fair enough? That's about the amount, right? <laughs> no matter how careful you are with that money, it cannot fund your vision. Are you getting the point now? A job was never designed to completely fund your assignment. Getting one stream of income or staying on one stream of income is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle. Please listen to me. Operating under one stream of income, I don't care how successful that stream is, is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle. That's the reason why many people never have enough. Now you are working. And they think the problem is that their paycheck is just 100,000. Then they now rise to a managerial level where they may be earning about 250, maybe 350. Some people never even earn that much. And then they find out that things do not change. Right? Because of Parkinson's law, that your need will rise to meet your level of income. The meaning of that is you cannot be earning 300,000 and be eating at mama food is that true 
So, while you were earning 10,000 or 20,000 or 50,000, you can go to a place where you eat food for 70 naira. But you cannot be earning 300,000 and go and sit down eating the food for 70,000 naira. So, your need, your, your expenses will rise with your level of income. You were earning 50,000 and you were able to do something decent with it. And then you forgot that you are going to get married. You thought your wife was a toy. You don't know that she's a human being with a stomach to eat, a body to dress, and then you had the gods to get her pregnant. Here comes your twins. See that? Yet, hold on. Whether you call them children or adults, financially, they are three human beings. Are you getting me? Regardless of their level of consumption, they will still take something out from you. And then you have a dog. Oh, and then you have goats. You see, we, you don't know that all the, once it is a living entity, it must consume. You have been counting yourself alone. Are you getting the point now? Now the trouble is, there is nothing called job security. Job security is an illusion. You know what job security is? Job security means that you are working in a place where um, your, your stay can be fairly predictable. That you can build a financial life around it because you think that in the next 10 or 15 years you will still be there. In the Nigeria of today and in the 21st century, the concept of job security does not exist. Praise the Lord. Everybody say hallelujah. Say I got a federal government job. Which one? Civil defense. And you laugh to mean that for the next 20 years I will be there. You really think so? See that? So we find consolation. Oh, I'm working in a bank. And all of a sudden you get up one day and your director tells you, sorry, we are downsizing people and uh, here's the list of those who must go. What did I do, sir? I said, no, no, no. You didn't do anything. We really appreciate you. In fact, your services are well needed. Can you leave? I remember somebody who got a job. I think he was with Etisalat or um, Airtel, one of these um, telecommunication companies. He was very happy. At the point he was preparing for his marriage, he prepared based on that budget. Then they now told them they are moving the office to Ibadan or something. And they told them they will share. You either follow them to Ibadan or they will give you 200000 and off you go. And he smiled and collected the 200,000. Because you see, when you are poor, you think 200,000 is a lot of money. Until you collect it and find out that the money to transport your in-laws or to transport yourself alone <laughs> will finish everything and then you find out that you are... I will never forget, a few days to his wedding, he refused to come to the place where the wedding would take place. I had to call him and say, where are you? said i'm so so pleased i said leave that place right now and come what is all that can't be can't run away just come and trust god hmm. that's very true nothing in this world will satisfy this is a part of the song i love jesus you're the cup that won't run dry every mundane listen the babylonian system this cosmos the economy of the world was never designed to make you rich it was designed to strangle you to death that's why i like that song is the cup that will never run you jesus you're the cup can you sing just that part one more time jesus you're the cup The wisdom of the word can open you up to a realm. It may not happen immediately, but as surely as the morning comes after the night, it can bring you into the place we call the wealthy place. There is such a place here and now. Hallelujah. So, the single income stream is one of the things that has destroyed a lot of people. Why do we need multiple streams of income? Number one, to ensure abundance at all seasons. To ensure abundance at all seasons. 
to ensure abundance at all seasons. Please let me have four people. I want to use them to just um, make an illustration. Three, four people. Let me. Thank you. Just stand here, guys. Watch this. Let's call these guys different streams. Just stand and face me. Thank you. Watch this. If this is the first and only stream of income you have, let's call this a job, right? We'll identify what the others are shortly. But let's assume this is all you have, your job. Let's even call it a nice place, NMPC. That's where many of us dream of. Or Shell, or Chevron, or whatever it is you want to call it, right? Watch this. This is all you have. Number one, it was never designed to fund your project. And number two, your salary will only keep coming to the extent to which that corporation keeps functioning. It's one thing for you to be employed and it's another thing for your corporation to keep being relevant. If you were working in Nitel in the 90s, you would be happy because Nitel was invincible. I mean, they were the only telecommunication company. You would imagine that working in Nitel by now, you would have been the boss only for you to be fired and sent away because the demand right for as long as there was a demand for their product and their service they had money when there was no demand number two if you were working in night post post office right and you were working as the secretary using the typewriters whether electronic or manual doesn't matter Right now, we have emails. I remember when we used to post letters. In fact, even with the young people have experienced some dramatic transitions. Remember when they used to use card? You get a card and then you load it 200, 500, and you slot it in one big something and you hold it, you know, and then you are trying to talk and then the card just finishes and it starts beeping, only for you to go and buy another one. Imagine within the last 10 to 20 years, the transition that has happened so for you to say job security in terms of working in an organization is a mirage the service that organization provides may be inelastic but then the question is what is the guarantee that they will still need your service how many people do we know seated here listening to me right now many who are following us online how many people do you know started working very well and they were happy they gave tight sincere people and now they've been laid off and they've remained there in their utter frustration five years have turned to ten years ten years has turned to fifteen years and many of us look around and we say daddy i grew up knowing you not to work and they say i've been waiting uh, even last week i submitted my cv and look at this he started that when you were five years. Now you are 25. For 20 years, he's hoping that one day somebody will need his service enough to give him a job. One stream. The beauty of multiple streams is this. Watch this. The, the limitation of one stream is covered up by another stream. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There is no stream of income that is perfect what you can do is to combine streams of income that complement one another so that the lapse of one is covered by the availability of another are, are you getting the point now this is part of the benefits for instance do you know that is one thing for you to get a job but it's another thing for you not to be paid there are workers in some states that have not been paid for how many months almost six months now you notice i'm sorry to say but most of the civil servants in nigeria don't pay them for two to four months and they are dead completely dead are you seeing that those who have extra streams of income while they wait for the salary to be paid there's something to fall back on see they can laugh with you and say kai times are hard but it's not true they are saying it because you will insult them if they say times are not hard they are identifying with that poverty mindset. So they say it's true, times are hard. But the truth is, they are, they are, they are, on heaven. They are in heaven. Heaven on earth. You see that? So you find out that this person is here. God forbid his car is stolen. 
His salary alone was designed to take care of the family. But because there is another stream, in two or three months, he has bought another car. For, so, for somebody who collected, he was loaned from the bank and he bought a car of 2.5 million. You have not finished paying the loan and they've stolen the car. You know you are finished. Whether you are to go for work or not, you must go. Because if not for anything, that loan must be paid. Out of the 2.5, you've paid only maybe 90,000 or 130,000. You know that you are, the journey is still far. You cannot afford to quit your job no matter how sick you are. So you see people angrily dragging themselves in the morning. That's why they vent the anger on you. They get up and look at you. One, two, three, four, five, six children. Now the seventh one has come. There is a loan of nine million to pay in the bank. They now cut our salary from 200,000 to 150. And the man is saying, where is my life going? See, every man you have seen was not like that. Every man you have seen who is angry, beating his wife. I can tell you if that's how he toasted the woman, she would have told him no. Something made them happy. Notice men from 50 years and above. That's why people don't even remember Father's Day. Because all we remember about fathers is they are cruel and wicked. It's not their fault. It's the inability to learn what I'm teaching you. And if you don't learn it, I guarantee you in the name of the Lord, you are on the way to becoming exactly like that. Absolutely. In fact, it will be harder. Because the 21st century, living in the 21st century right now, is a lot more difficult and complex. Right? Well, if you factor in terrorism, if you factor in wickedness by people, put in all these factors, humanly speaking, that living in the 21st century is living in a challenging time. Your advantage is in the fact that you have many streams. So you are an ocean receiving from many streams. If one stream dries up, there is another that can complement. While you're working on that one, then there is another. There is no millionaire I know except wicked and godless and corrupt and wicked people. Except those ones. But there is nobody who is a millionaire and a billionaire. And trust me, I've met a number of them in my life. None of them operates under one street. It's poor and average people, civil servants that operate on one stream of income. You calculate everything what the father and the mother is getting. For some, it's not even up to 100,000. And yet, the school fees of one child is 75,000 or 50,000 or even 30,000. Why would the man not be angry? Do you know how many angry people are in Nigeria? Have you seen them lately? You stand outside tomorrow morning and just watch. Just get a chair and sit down and watch people. Somebody will be moving and just kick something. Oh, and it just stress. Don't laugh. Oh, I'm, I'm very serious about what I'm saying. You are laughing now because somebody is giving you money all the time. By the end of this year, they will tell you you have come of age. And uh, we have seen how God has helped you thus far. From now henceforth, you are on your own. That's when it will dawn on you. You will go back to your notes and start reading everything that I've said. I saw this happen to my father. I saw this happen in my very family. I saw this happen to many pastors, sincere people, very honest people. This has happened to many ministries. There are many beggarly ministries. This has led people into witchcraft. It has led people into corruption. Get the implication of this. It has led people into 419. It has led people into all kinds of things. Whenever they catch armed robbers or they catch prostitutes, look at our ladies. Many ladies have gone into prostitution. Do you know that I, I saw a shocking statistic that I think is it about 40% of the firstborn in many families are not the product of the husband and the wife. When we get to heaven, there's going to be a lot of confession. Very funny statistics. Multiple streams of income is the key to surviving financially in the 21st century. Activating multiple streams of income, hear me brothers and sisters, is the key.
to surviving the vicious tide the vicious tide of economic hardship because it will happen you have not seen recession yet more will come it's in your bible right talking about the heavens over people becoming like brass and their earth becoming like iron it will happen you can't stop it you can only exempt yourself I choose to exempt myself so I rather pay the price now and exempt myself hallelujah bless you guys thank you so the limitation of one stream is covered by the availability of another now watch this I want to teach you something about the benefit of multiple streams of income write two words down one cash flow please quickly let's save time we have to finish um, what we have one cash flow number two write capital projects one cash flow two capital projects you are not listen you are not truly financially free if there is no structure around your life to deal with these things watch this cash flow talks of the money that keeps coming consistently to be able to meet your immediate needs and your expenditure is that true capital projects or the money the income for capital project talks about the resource the financial resources that you will need for all the capital projects you have building you know school fees of your children and and all of that savings and so on and so forth now watch this our parents were taught so much about long-term projects so they bought land right they have cattle they have goats they have a lot of things that can meet long-term projects but they did not make arrangements for cash flow so you can see a man that owns 10 houses but he cannot produce 10 naira to take his child to the hospital under emergency you will think the man is stingy because you that's how many of our parents many of us now think our parents are giving some other people money they may not necessarily be doing that they are just financially illiterate and they are suffering the consequence for it so they do not they didn't prepare for today they were focusing so much on tomorrow they forgot that it's until you are alive today that you can meet tomorrow are you getting that now so they forgot that there will be needs how many houses have you gone to that you know the people are rich and sincerely they cannot bring out 1,000 naira to go and buy chicken somewhere and just come and prepare it because the man is broke. He may say, I don't have money. You think he's joking, but truly, truly, there is nothing. That's a poor financial life. Yet he has land, right? Yes, he has resources. Who owns this container? He's the person. Who owns this Coca-Cola depot? He's the person, but there's no provision for this. Now, the trouble is, in a bid to remedy that, the younger generation, our generation has focused entirely on cash flow to get money to always be in your pocket and we're forgotten about tomorrow you see the mistake so i need money now i want to buy the watch of twenty thousand now i want to buy the trouser now so you see somebody and say man this guy is rich the watch of twenty thousand shoe of 15 or twenty thousand you are wearing a suit of this you calculate everything on him and he's standing he's wearing two hundred thousand, and you are beguiled to think he's very rich still everything he's wearing and he becomes a beggar instantly because he's not preparing for tomorrow are you getting what i'm saying so financial literacy is the ability to keep that balance such that you can eat today you can live well today and then at the same time prepare for tomorrow there are many of our parents you will start enjoying their money when they are eight years at eight years the project they started 20 years will now come to fruition but at that time they are too old they can't do anything they would die and leave it for uncles who will swear that they will charm you if you don't leave that money alone and you will quietly just leave are you seeing that now and then we the younger generation are so obsessed I'm amazed to see the way our generation is so obsessed about producing instant results. Watch people that graduate. Everybody wants to show I'm working. 
I now bought a car, a BMW, and um, I don't, I no longer use the road. I now fly, I fly, I fly around. Now I'm flying to this place, I'm flying to that place, and then you carry your phone and say, this is, this is iPhone, iPhone what? iPhone 6. I, have you seen the speed of the internet and so on and so forth? And then we use this to lie to ourselves that it means we are rich. That's why every rich man will look at every small boy just behaving and nod his head and say, this guy is about to regret it. Unfortunately, most of our sisters have been trained to identify those kind of people and define them as being rich. So you come back and say, is that brother that asked me? And they say, which one? The poor one or the rich one? And then you say the rich one, meaning the one that held that phone, the one that the, the watch or the shoes and all these were glittering. You, are, you will be in big error. Because if you neglect today, you will die today and never meet tomorrow. And if you concentrate just on today, you will enjoy today. If you wear the cloth you should wear tomorrow, today you walk naked tomorrow. If you eat the food you should eat tomorrow, today get set for hunger. Are you getting what I'm saying? So my goal in the teaching tonight is to be able to help you structure your financial life such that you will be able to at least have something to live by and then prepare greatly for the future. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for wisdom. The key to activating multiple streams of income. Write this down. You do not activate the stream just by blindly starting up many businesses. Now, I listen to business people a lot and I've had the privilege to be and speak in a few conferences. But the problem here, watch this. For many people, the danger huh, is that they just tell you, go and start up a business. Aside from your job, do something else. That teaching is very sincere but misleading. If you have received that teaching, I want you to throw it away now and listen to what I'm about to teach you. Because for many people, that's, that's the circumference of your business seminar. Are you getting blessed? So they've told you, together with the job, start something. Anything, just start. No, sir. You will start and fail and fail woefully. Write this down. God's system for activating your streams of income. I want to teach you the kingdom system. There is a Babylonian system of establishing multiple streams of income that ends you in frustration, ends you in penury, or you will be rich, but at the expense of your salvation. You will be rich, but at the expense of very important things in your life. Everything that we do, we must do it from the perspective of the kingdom. And this is where men of God must balance. I believe in, in reaching out to business and getting a lot of business people and their ideas. But please hear me. You must be careful. Not everything taught in the business world should just be lifted and brought to church hook, line, and sinker. Many men of God go for a lot of secular business meetings and they teach them a lot of things and they are motivated. I've, I've listened to all those people to trust me. But you must sustain a kingdom paradigm to be able to edit out the things that are not consistent with the way of the Lord. Because anything that is not founded on the truth of God's word, I don't care what it is, it will not last. Or even if it produces result for you, it will take something else out of your life. It is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and will not add sorrow to it. Say amen. So what is God's system for activating the streams of income? Let's hurry up. Proverbs. Proverbs. of Proverbs very quickly eighteen verse sixteen quickly it's a popular scripture we always talk about but from here we'll rush so that we'll finish on time what I'm about to bring before you is a powerful revelation that will change your life Proverbs 18 verse 16 let's read on it says a man's gift please listen 
please pay attention a man's gift does what does two things what's number one it makes room for him is that true what's number two it brings him before a man's gift does two things for him it gives him opportunity and it gives him access write it down your gift does two things for you that is very vital in producing finances in your life it gives you opportunities and then it gives you access access entrance before the great a man's gift So how do you identify the streams of income in your life? Many people have been taught. They, so they teach you different businesses. And they tell you just do this, this. No, 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 no. no. There's no guarantee that because they gave you a good business idea, you will succeed. You see the mistake. This is where we mess up and we mislead people a lot. Write this down. You identify the streams in your life by looking at two things. Number one, your gifts and abilities. Your gifts and abilities are pointers to the kinds of streams that God has granted you access to. Your gifts and your abilities. Write it down. Number two, the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion. The problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion. These are the two scriptural ways of identifying the streams that God puts in your life. One, your gifts and your abilities. Two, the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion. Not just any problem. You know they tell people, search for problems. There are problems all around Nigeria. You go and try a problem that you don't have passion for. And that's when you know that problems are not things you just solve overnight it must be in line with your passion passion is the key that sustains you in a place it is passion that puts you back up when you fail anytime you commit yourself to anything you are not passionate about you waste your time you waste energy you waste resources is God helping us write this down every gift and ability you have is a potential stream of income how true Every gift and ability in your life is a potential stream of income. Every gift and every ability you have is a potential stream. Look at David for instance. Almost every gift the Bible identifies in David later became a stream for him his ability to play right his ability to be faithful in service his leadership skill everything was utilized in his life i'm about to make a statement that is very striking maybe controversial especially for pastors i want you to listen to me do not let men box you into one stream and stop you from exploring other streams don't get into that illusion of making people box you because they identify and they know you as functioning in one stream if you are not careful people can put you in a box they know you as a pastor and you remain a pastor and die a pastor there are other streams crying for expression but the religious environment keeps people down and keeps people poor there's a lot that I want to say here how many times have many pastors with great entrepreneurial potentials, with great leadership potentials, there are other streams of income that can find expression, but they are boxed to the pulpit and left there. Why? Because people say you are a pastor. And the meaning of that is remain there, be poor there, and die there. This kind of mentality does not longer exist in the 21st century. You cannot live in the 21st century with this mindset again or I am a civil servant 
so when you call people you say those who are civil servants this side and you see a mass of people like bees coming to this side those who are businessmen this side that thing is about to change in the 21st century that concept of choosing whether you are a civil servant or choosing whether you are an entrepreneur are you getting my point there must be a weaving of it to survive the vicious financial circle in the 21st century are you getting blessed is god helping you there are many pastors i say this with a particular bias for pastors because we have said pastors are wicked people because pastors have been caught in all kinds of financial scandals in church eating god's money pastors have been found manipulating people and doing all sorts of things and the reason is because they have to respond to the necessary frustration that comes by having a single stream of income now the man is a pastor and is earning twenty thousand with five children right you can imagine what that is that you give a pastor a house and one car does not mean he will not need money again and they themselves have not been educated they have not been taught they lack financial literacy are you getting the point now so the pastor has to necessarily keep preaching messages that will manipulate people into because he the pastor's children must go to school is that not true the pastor must also eat some of you after the service you go to the pastor's house 10 people immediately after after service and all of them deserve to be fed this has brought a lot of problems for people especially those in ministry listen to me every potential you have that god put in you is crying for expression and you should never go back to the lord without giving it expression every gift in you i plan in my life that every gifting and every potential his majesty has deposited in my life will be adequately deployed praise the lord there are so many things that's why many pastors are poor that's why they are broke one of my greatest mentors dr miles munro a man who was able to cut across both the secular and the contemporary society utilized his potentials as a pastor he was the senior pastor and the founder of bahamas faith ministry international and yet at the same time brothers and sisters he was a consultant for 16 presidents how many a consultant an advisor to 16 presidents at the same time he was so notable the bahamian nation had to make him an ambassador imagine that and then at the, at the same time he owned an aircraft company not aircraft they are busy shouting that people are buying jet many of you may not know let me explain it to you what it means it, he he not own one aircraft boeing 737 no 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 he owned a fleet of aircraft the very company that deals in it and yet he was a kingdom man he lived well on earth and is gloriously honored in heaven that's why he was a man of integrity he was not just a man of integrity because he's the, there was absolutely no need why will you steal church money for what how much is the money are you getting the point i tell you the truth not exposing people to the different giftings in their lives to deploy it and then leaving them say it's like you are hungry you fasted for three days and then they make hot food nice food rise up and steaming right and then one drink is in front of you and they say just keep your nose and be staring at it but don't touch it that's the same frustration that happens to a pastor that you live with millions in a church account and he's sitting down and his son he cannot pay thirty thousand. they must be thieves necessarily with time even if they are conviction you see that don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you that's the reason why many, many pastors cannot be bold in teaching the truth because they have inconvenienced too many people and God is helping us tonight say after me in the name of Jesus I am gifted shout it in the name of Jesus there is a gift upon my life there are graces upon my life there are abilities upon my life 
and I will deploy every one of them to become a stream of income. Even if God tells me to drop ministry today, I will never be poor for the rest of my life because there are other streams. Are you getting me? Before God called me, I was doing something. Is that not true? You see, many of us act as if, oh, God found people lazy. Go and read your Bible. Everybody God called into ministry, he called from. He called them from a standpoint of diligently doing something. Moses was standing his father in law's sheep. Is that true? Every single one. Peter, they were all fishermen. God does not call lazy people. Please don't make it look like being in ministry is a license unto laziness. There are too many things I can do with my life to bring me stream of income. If I'm not a preacher, at least I can speak. Right? There are so many things. There are books to write. I have different thoughts on different areas. I can document my persuasions. There are all kinds of financial and business vehicles to set up. So don't you see a man of God rich and just think it's church money or just think and think hey, are people not dashing their money. You see articles blackmailing men of God all around and saying a man who was poor but now he has, as though he's not supposed to be blessed. People are arguing and complaining about one jet, two jets. My goodness. I don't know what will happen by the time we we'll come. If we need 100 jets, we will buy all of them. I guarantee you. Very unapologetically. See that? You can be rich through the dignity of kingdom integrity. It doesn't have to be by crooks. It doesn't have to be by plants. And you don't have to be angry at wealthy people. They look like you. You're of equal age, but your mindsets are not the same. Your sacrifices are not the same. Your courage is not at the same level. Hallelujah. Never allow anybody keep you in one position and not allow you to deploy your talents. There are many of us who are seated here. Bishop T.D. Jakes, the, the pastor of Potter's house, right? He wrote one book, Woman Thou Art Loose. Just one book. And that book brought him $4 million. Multiply that by 210 Naira there about. That gives you the equivalent in Naira because he deployed his writing potentials. It became an added stream of income. When people were insulting him for living in a house of 2.1 million, I said, come on, give the man a break. He didn't steal anybody's money. Why will I be worth 10 million, 20 million, 100 million and not live in a house? How much is 1.2? How much is 2 or 3 million compared to 100 million? Don't insult people. If a man buys a car of 20 million, don't insult him and say he's extravagant. Compared to what? You are gauging his success based on your level. Compared to what? You see that? These are some of the poisonous mindsets that have destroyed us. We never forget, we forget the fact that these guys are sick. Their tape ministry, the books that they have written enough will feed them for a lifetime. Just the books. Bishop Oyedeko, for instance, I hear that he does not even collect one naira from his books. And there are at least 60 books he has written. How many of them are bestsellers? Yet we, we, have, we are the first to criticize people and run down men of God and run down people because how much is the peanuts you get from congregations compared to the wisdom. See, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask, not let him criticize those who are working in it. Hallelujah. Ministry for me alone, with all the blessings of ministry, is only one stream of income. There are so many of them in my life that have been developed and others are still being developed. I will never be poor. It's not about being a preacher. It's about realizing that once there is a demand for what I do, 
and I train myself in the ability to see, to do it. When you are sleeping, the wealthy people are awake, studying seminars, doing a lot of things, right? And then we see them rich and we criticize them. Please, I want to say this koinonia from today. Never develop the attitude of criticizing wealthy people again. You will never be like what you resent. Anything you drive away from your life, you can never be like it. Honor is the seed for access. Hallelujah. I'm friends to many, by the grace of God, many wealthy people and many millionaires. I'm not so daft to be around people who are blessed and not ask questions. See that? This is very important. But then let me, let me quickly balance something because there are so many people who will be hearing. Now, I explained to us that there are all kinds of streams of income. Watch this. The trouble I have, especially with men of God, in business and other things, is that they do not know how to draw the line between the different fragments and facets of their lives. Are you seeing that now? When Jesus entered the temple, what did he do? He took a whip and he was flogging those who were doing business in the church. In the church. Jesus showed us that there is a difference. As a man of God, I have my corporate life. I have other dimensions, leadership and all of that. You see that? I cannot come into church and be doing business in the church. No. No. A thousand times no. The moment I do that, I'm taking advantage of the loyalty. Are you getting that? Of the people. And using it for my... That's why you never come and hear me talk business in church. No, sir. The Bible says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Right? I cannot bring up a product right now and force everybody in Koinonia to buy it. It is my product, but a lot of men of God are doing it. This is where the balance must come in. You cannot use the vast people that God has given you to train and build and then squeeze into them. No, no. There is a difference between different aspects of your life. That's the reason why God fragmented himself into different aspects. You cannot know Rafa by studying Jaira. Jaira is a dimension itself. Rafa is a dimension itself. Sikenu is a dimension itself. Is that true? El Shaddai is a dimension itself. But all of those names belong to one person. I am. So he said, who do men say that I am? And they were calling different dimensions of him. As a, as a man of God, you are dimensional. While it is true that you do not stay on one place, you must know where the boundary lies. Never carry business into church and go and manipulate people. No, it's wrong. Very wrong. If you are here as a man of God and you are doing it, stop. Stop. You must give people an opportunity to make their decisions. They are not daft. Of course, I understand sometimes because of our kindness and generosity. Do you know why I'm telling you this? Because there are some things I may not be able to share here, but see, the business world is a lot different from ministry. In the business world, you must give people room to take responsibility for themselves. As a man of God, you can ruin your church in one moment. Right? I know there was a situation that happened in, in one church down in Abuja. It's, it's one of the popular churches around where there were some people who brought some land to sell and then they brought it to church and they designed one scheme and members were happy and all of that and then somehow the people were dishonest and they swindled the people with the church the man almost lost his ministry because people started saying our pastor is a thief he connived with people to eat our money do not think because members sit down and love you they love you as a man of God but you must give them room to build their financial capacities don't over pamper people in the name of kindness they will stab you when they fail because the business world is a world that requires its own maturity are you getting me many people do not have business sense and you expose them in the name of church to businesses or some things when things go wrong 
or it fails they will kill you they will write articles about you they will lock you up as a man of god and so let people take their responsibilities by themselves are you getting what i'm saying is god giving us wisdom this is a mistake a lot of pastors have made they come to church anybody just comes in and says i'm a lawyer i have some land i am a this i have that and then the pastor comes and announces and because people love the pastor they now run around and come and say this is our pastor this and that and that or they raise money to buy church land you know, all kinds of things please i'm telling us especially for men of god who are here who are upcoming maintain integrity maintain integrity as a man of God, define the jurisdiction of your work to the ministry and stay there. Now, there are other platforms you can create, like Sunday Adelaja, who created a lot of business platforms. If you want to do anything that is business in the church, set up a committee or a club and let people subscribe to it. Spell the terms of it and let the people know that they are venturing into this, not in the name of the church, but at their own risk. That way, whatever happens, the integrity of the church is preserved. Is God teaching us? I told you I struggle to teach you what I'm teaching you because this is what you would teach in a business class that you pay hundreds of thousands. But this is giving us wisdom, especially for those of us who are leaders. Don't carry the zeal of business ideas or whatever and come and project on people. That they are praying in tongues and they hug you. You don't yet know their attitude towards money. They will stab you and kill you. God helping us let's continue so your streams of income should be around your giftings should be around your abilities your streams of income now look up I want to teach you something please very important now write this word down time t-i-m-e write this word down time your life on earth is measured in time don't forget this your life on earth is measured in time that means whatever you give your time to you have given part of your life to the time you are giving your employer or your job your office is part of your life you are giving to them Write this down. Focus on activating streams that increase your income without eating up your time. Focus. There is only limited time you have. Everybody has only 24 hours. You cannot have 25 hours in a day. So if you generate streams of income around your life and all of them require your time and your active participation, you will wear your life out and you will be ineffective. Wealthy people focus on activating streams that increase their income without necessarily eating up their time. Let me give you an instance. If I write a book right now, if I write one book, right, I communicate my thoughts, maybe books on, there are so many books that I have, I'm just waiting for the Lord to release me to begin to write books i know many of them will be bestsellers because i will not just get up and write books i will humble myself and meet those who have produced bestsellers and ask them i have the content but what of the marketing what of the publicity never do a thing until you have consulted with the best of the best you will minimize mistakes you will make instant progress so i can write a book right now for instance and then release it and i can be here preaching and somebody is buying my book in a bookstore doesn't know me has never seen me may never see me right and then income is coming into me millions and millions of income coming because i'm documenting my persuasions and there are many areas i can write on i can write on the anointing i can write on wealth and prosperity i can write on leadership all the areas that I know God has granted me grace in. I'm just showing you how one stream. Now I can be here and be effective in Koinonia. 
another thing for instance if i build an estate you see that if i build an estate there are people renting i don't even know them i've never seen them for instance but i'm here teaching the word my time is being invested to the principal thing i've been called to do but there are channels that are bringing me in are you getting what i'm saying now very important if i teach assuming that we're selling our teachings imagine the hundreds of millions would have made by now on just the media ministry but god instructed us not to do that the impact is more important than the money one grateful person can bring what would have gotten in 10 years and bring in one day this is the benefit every time you dispense value you must be rewarded whether you sell it or you give it free it's a law so we are not at a loss at all now imagine that today's message the media department will now package it the wealthy place volume one volume two volume three right and then maybe each of them is sold now you can imagine that and all of that is happening so people are buying it somewhere whereas you are still here as much as possible value your time your time is premium you must know that you cannot give away your time unnecessarily for everything it's too much to give your life just for money no let wisdom minimize the dispensing of your time so that you will spend that time on the things that matter in life i hate seeing people spending all their time chasing after money you should chase after god chase after god seek ye first the kingdom and seek ye to align yourself to the principles of the kingdom that's what is meant by his righteousness here and he said all other things will be added let's hurry up when you give your time you give your life never forget that the reason why they pay you salary is because you are exchanging two things for that salary. Number one, you are exchanging your gift or your potential or your, your skill. Number two, you are exchanging your time. These are the two things that go for your salary. You cannot afford to do this for the rest of your life. Because your 24 hours, if you spend one third or two third of that 24 hours investing in somebody's project and his assignment, how much do you have left for yourself? And for the advancement of the kingdom imagine that i cannot come for koinonia now and say because i'm trying to do something there i'm looking for money somewhere it's terrible i'm failing in my assignment it doesn't matter how much money i make so you have to be careful so that you don't just that's the language of those we call hustlers hustlers are those who are ready to commit their time to anything that will give them money right they have their time is valueless to them so they can give it away just for anything my time is precious to me because my life is measured in time God gives me the gift of 24 hours every day and I focus on doing the things that are consistent with my vision and my assignment and while it is true that I want to activate streams of income it will not be at the detriment of my assignment and so you must structure your life in such a manner that you can activate multiple streams of income and then at the same time conserve your time as much as possible praise the lord write this down there is a, an equation for financial freedom financial freedom is equal to financial abundance plus time plus peace of mind that you have money does not mean you are financially free financial freedom is equal to financial abundance the availability of the resources plus time there are people who have money but no time no time to pray no time to build no time to spend a quality time with their children and their loved ones and their families no time at all they tell you no time i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy they started doing that when they were 20 now they are 55 i'm busy i'm busy and then they die because on the seventh day god rested you you are in the ninth day you have not rested you will die hallelujah let me tell you the reason why it's so easy to be rich in the 21st century in the school of prosperity especially in the 21st century almost any and everything has a demand there is a demand for almost any and everything this is the reason why there should be no one here 
seated under the sound of my voice that in the next three years in the next five years should be poor impossible there is a demand for just any and everything the world is a global village there is a demand for just anything see right now even people's laugh has brought them millions somebody just laughs is it not your ringtone oh yes somebody just laughs around and does everything that side a does another one that side b you see that and you put it as your ringtone and you go and download it and you do a lot of things anything at all anything a lady because she has nice fingers will make millions because she will market the ring of a jewelry company they just keep putting rings on her hand for every ring hundred thousand dollars can you imagine just for having a nice finger there is a demand for anything so you have been playing with that your hand could it be that that's the rod of god just for being fine you can wipe poverty away from your life forever right just for being not fine you can still wipe poverty away from your life because you can be used in both ways it depends on the message that is being communicated um, I'm just I'm speaking generally there is a demand for everything absolutely everything no matter how little the skill is there is a demand for it look at how pastors you may sit down and think that there are already too many pastors allow the glory of God to come upon your life and see how many people will scrounge scrounge after that from today till Wednesday non-stop I have ministrations every day I have a meeting morning and evening you will think there are already enough pastors no no there are 7.2 billion people right you think there are an, enough people selling pure water or whatever it's because you do not know how many people are on earth when you know there is a demand for anything and i told you the formula once there is a demand there is money for it you go and meet somebody and say borrow me 10 naira he'll tell you i cannot but sell something he will pay you for it in the 21st century brothers and sisters you are only limited by your creativity you are only limited by your creativity. Ah! There is a mighty financial army that will rise. Even if you don't pay attention to this, I know that there are millions of people who will take this message and will run with it. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Write one word down. We're almost done. Creativity. Please write it. This is an important key in the school of prosperity. Creativity. What does it mean to be creative? Creativity is the ability to birth new or improved ideas. Oh, this is key to your life. The ability to birth new or improved ideas if you lack this one ability you will never be rich because that's the key to being different that's the key to being unique it's not just what you do it's the uniqueness in it and the key to being unique is hidden in one word creativity the first revelation of god in the bible was not as a savior was as a creator and he created us in that image creativity what we were born to do anyone who has a mind has the capacity to be creative your destiny is at the mercy of your creativity this gentleman can produce this 30 minutes 
of deep intense worship just with instruments and he will pray and fast and train himself and just package something like this he can call it anything the dew of heaven part one millions of these copies will be sold because people will put it in their phones can have a contract with most of the the, 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 the people iPhones and, and iTunes and all of these people and they can put it they can even put it by default in many gadgets and is blessing people millions of people are buying it and this guy is getting blessed because there is a demand for everything that's why Don Wen will never be poor I know you gave your life to Christ at his song but he became rich because you bought the thing yes he never sleeps he never slumbers but you bought it or at least it was given to you there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. 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 Creativity is the key to effectively creating a demand for your gifts or your potentials. The reason why nobody has placed a demand on your gift is because you have not added creativity to it. The reason why your shop looks like that of every other person is because you are not creative about it. Let me tell you, in the world of prosperity, you lose by becoming like every other person. Your uniqueness is what stands you out. Your competitive advantage. There is what you get in Koinonia that you will never get anywhere. It cannot be cloned. There is what you get from my life that you cannot get anywhere. There is what I should get from your life that I cannot get anywhere. This is your key to prosperity. Men will never come to you if there is an alternative to you. They will come to you to the degree to which you are uncommon and unique. I hear the chains of him falling. I hear the chains falling. I will give you four streams of income that can help you. That's, that's all we'll touch for this. Um, there are at least eight. I call them recession-proof streams of income. They are all in the Bible. But I'll give only four here. School of Ministry students will add two more. And then that's about it. Any other one has to be in a business or a corporate platform. Ready? Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2. If we can get NIV, please give us NIV quickly. I hear the chains. Can we get NIV? Okay, fine. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2. Please, let's save time. Will you break every chain? Break every chain. It says, give portions to seven, yea, to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Right? What other version do I have? It says, it says, I, I can't remember the version now, not, not amplified. It says, invest in seven places, yea, in eight. Um, what was that version? I don't know. One of these new versions. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. In other words, scatter your streams. Right? That concept of lay your egg in one basket is nonsense. Throw away that theology. Poor people said that. That's why they are poor. When the basket falls, what do you do? You die with it there. Listen. Thank you. God bless you. NLT. It says, but divide your investments among many places. 
for you do not know what risks might light ahead I hear the chains I love the Bible hey, yeah. mm. number one land land everybody write it down land open bracket land and anything you can get under it on it and above it it's all called land you know it as real estate land together with anything under it on it and above it look at me you are not rich if you do not own land are you hearing what i'm saying write it so that you don't forget i don't care what else you are you are poor if you do not own land because land is a fixed asset it cannot be stolen even if a bomb falls on that land it can only affect what is on it you will not see a big hole suddenly looking at you land is one of the greatest communications of God's justice and mercy upon the inhabitants of the earth. I'll stop there. Land. Two. Education. I'm giving you four fail-proof streams of income. Under education, write the following. Anything, whether speaking, writing, or setting up structures that transfer knowledge. Education is all about imparting knowledge. The Bible gives us a clue into becoming rich. He said before the coming of Christ, knowledge shall increase. There will be an unsearchable demand for knowledge. That means anything you do that will transfer knowledge to people is a guaranteed source of wealth. There's nothing to hide. There's no secret about it. There's no secret there in the first place. Education. Speaking. How many people rake in millions of dollars every week just because they are able to communicate? They are not just talking. They are transferring knowledge. Imagine that this was a business meeting and everybody is paying 100,000 for the seminar. Calculate. How many people? 100,000 times all the people we have including all those who are online and i'm doing the same thing i don't need to talk louder i don't need to shout more the exact same thing 10 years after i have preached this or i've said this or i've delivered this lecture i will still be getting paid from it education one of the cheapest aspect of education is writing the ability to document your persuasion for as long as you think there is something you want the world to hear you can document it the only problem is what many people call book writing is nonsense they are just hungry people looking for money so there is no excellence and no creativity and at the end of it only 100 copies are sold and the bookstore tells you please get out but there is a key purpose driven life right rick warren that one book brought tens and hundreds of millions of dollars it was so profound they had to create a workbook for it love and respect there are many books that have become bestsellers rediscovering the kingdom because individuals documented strong persuasions that rattled the ideologies of continents could there be a persuasion in your life right now that you need to birth and bring out you are sitting upon a gold mine and yet you are crying crying for food and crying for water the only limitation to your life should be the voice of God not lack of creativity it's God speaking to us education number three your job your job paid employment it's a stream of income so your job is not bad you can get a job at least you receive salary from it and the beautiful part of that is that your salary can solve your short-term needs because you know every month a fixed income is coming 
so it can give you room to focus on other things that will take time to build how many have I given uh, let's stop at the last one transportation the only reason why oil and gas is useful is because there are human beings that need to move around we love oil and gas but we hate transportation how unwise I know that the resources are also used for a lot of things but did you know that for as long as there are human beings on earth there must be movement you studied something that was a clue to your prosperity but you forgot remember what we I think it was in biology social studies Mr. Niger huh? biology Mr. Niger movement as part of the quality of living things is that not true that was the key to your wealth that you have been neglecting every day immediately after koinonia now listen every week i don't know how okay i have an idea you cannot imagine how much is given to the transport companies that transport people without fail every week is that not true transportation if they were your bosses it would have been your money are you getting what I'm saying? How many people have had 300,000, 400,000 and then they used it to buy two phones? Foolish person. Whereas the phone is not bringing you anything. There are sometimes in that big phone only 300 naira will be there. And you can't make any call. You cannot even browse. Whereas you would have been able to buy even if it was a small golf. These are the kinds of businesses that you don't even need to know how to drive. right the the, the 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 driver that carries me around he started driving me three years ago and within that three years he has bought two extra cars two extra cars and i tell you a large percentage of that was for my money think about that they are always happy they you never see them frowning they are smiling because every time he sees me he sees his destiny and for as long as I need his services, I will keep paying for it. How many of you are sitting on millions, hundreds of thousands, roaming around, whereas, or trying to get rooms and apartments to prove a point that does not have to be proved? You want to show people, now you live in a three-bedroom flat that is empty, with one small mattress in one of the rooms, and people think you are a big boy. You are not big, you are small. Whereas something would have been bringing you income. Let me tell you something. The transport sector is a mysterious sector people have never studied. It's a sector that starts bringing you money instantly. From the first day the car goes out, by evening money is coming. 5 a.m. in the morning, brothers and sisters, there are people who get up begging. Whether it is town service, whether it is wherever. I know someone who bought Kekenapem, right? He just bought one, I think, second year or something like that. And then when he bought that Kekenapem, I think about 12,000 12, comes in every week. 12,000. He just went and registered it with the association, National Union, those their union. And then he's around praising the Lord and giving tithe every week. And you are saying, this guy, is he a thief? Or, no, 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 no. Do you have to be smart to do that? Not necessary. You just have to be poor. And that's why I told you there is no reason, brothers and sisters, for people to be poor. What's wrong with five people coming together? You all have 50, 50,000. Have a very well-defined term. You don't need to wait till you have one million. What's wrong with three or four people coming together? All of them having 100,000. And you buy a golf. In four, five months, you are broken even. And you can buy another one. And then buy another one. While that is happening, you are busy increasing your financial intelligence. How much have you spent from January to this year to, to now? Some of you millions. Look at how many of our parents are sitting down and getting angry at people. How many times did they pay them arrears of millions? What did they do with it? They went to a club and called friends and blew the money. They blew one golf away in one night to prove that their arrears has arrived. And yet we keep blaming God. But tonight God is giving somebody intelligence. You don't need to register any company. You don't need to know anybody. 
with an average car or an average golf at least 3,000 is coming for you every day this is the minimum in seven days is 21,000 for doing nothing you don't need to go to school you don't need to know but there are many people sitting on you and when you see blessed people you think they are arrogant they are not they are not the income that comes to your hand is in direct proportion to the demand the transport sector there are many people dreaming i will go into oil and gas i will go into oil and gas how much do you know it takes to start oil and gas you want to be a thief can't you start gradually how many people are sitting on five million ten million that are waiting to buy oil blocks of billions you have eaten your own prosperity by yourself how many people have started popcorn? Popcorn inside ABU. Is that not true? Popcorn. I'll never forget years ago when one of, I think that was in 2006 or 7, I wanted to start one popcorn machine, popcorn business in New Bamadi, and I wanted somebody to manage for me. So I needed to, I sent him to go and do a research for me on everything. I was surprised when the, the owner of the popcorn said he makes 5,000 naira every day. Every day. You are eating, you bought it 30 naira, but many just like you are paying for it. And he said during orientation and uh, uh, what do we call it, graduation matric, it can skyrocket to as much as 15,000, 20,000. There is no single ice cream machine in Zaria. Not that all those ones that uh, they, they put the thing as if it's tough. I'm talking of real, a standard. Look at this. There are many of you sitting down. What's wrong with 10 people? Who come in with creativity? About 250,000 will buy that thing and go and open up something. I guarantee you, in one month, you will make your money back. That's how desperate it is. Um, I like ice cream like what? There's a place in Abuja. Every time they see me, they're happy because they, my money will finish there. I can't make it, so I must pay for it. Whatever you cannot do for yourself, be sure to pay for it. If you ever get it free, someone paid for it. Who is God speaking to tonight? I'm showing you streams. I'm a student. I'm young. Very soon you'll find out that the difference between you and graduation is one exam. Just one. And you come out and say it's a lie. Maybe you say get out of here. You are finished. Go, 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 go. Why should you be poor when there is such a demand? A de there are, look, let me tell you something. If you have 20, 20 of any of the things I mentioned, there will still not be enough demand. How many saloons are in Italy? There are about 40,000 students. 40,000 students or more. And about 60% of those people are ladies. Count the number of saloons you have in your campus. Are they up to 10? I doubt if they are up to 10. Servicing at least 10 or 20,000 people. If you have 1,000 more of those things, it will still not be enough. And yet we criticize those who are producing because we have, been, we have been wired to consume. That's all we do. Those who produce are the ones who are working. Many of us are, are going into food. Question. If we don't buy the food, why don't you get into businesses that do not need refrigeration and all of these things? I, I don't know about you, but I don't like things that give me heart attack. You see that? That's why I hate businesses that have to do with many people. One person's fight with his wife will affect my diligence. I don't like that. I like to be responsible. <laughs> I like to be responsible for my, my diligence or otherwise. I can't let another person's carelessness cancel everything I've done. No, if I do well, let me be commended. If I do bad, that's why all those kind of things, shipping vegetable from here to Port Harcourt, I will get into those kind of things. You can do that, but no way. So if the man is drunk on the way, I suffer because of his drunkenness. I don't like those kinds of business. This is me personally. You have been sitting on a gold mine, wishing that things will change. But God is speaking to you. Especially for those of us who are working. You are earning your 50, 50,000. Why don't you close your eyes and be determined 
that for the next six months you are going to save let me tell you something write it down never borrow money as much as possible or don't borrow money as much as much as possible this is a difficult thing i know i'm human trust me it's a very difficult thing but i want you to make a vow today with your life that as much as god grants you the grace you will never borrow money the borrower is slave to the lender say it after me borrowing will put you in slavery forever you can be addicted to borrowing borrowing is like drugs because it comes easy when you borrow five naira you will borrow hundred thousand you will borrow five million until you find out that you are in debt of 500 million and you cannot know where it came from because of borrowing a borrower some of you as you are sitting down right now not just from anything maybe business failure or whatever your own personal debt that you have eaten everything you are wearing and the room you are staying off came you borrowed money for it you are smiling but there is a pile of debt that is growing and you are borrowing to keep servicing it you will be a slave forever it is one of the babylonian system that's why you notice i never talked about borrowing i'm sorry i know that this insults a lot of your business book, but i don't believe it in business we teach that there's good debt and there's bad debt you use good debt as a leverage you use bad debt for consumption no debt is the kingdom's way no debt say it shout it again after hearing all that i've told you today you can choose to be emotional about what i've said and get up and return back like someone returning back to his vomit or you can make up your mind and say this is it i've come to the end of myself lord i'm ready to begin to take decisions listen the key to producing anything in life is to adjust the most predictable thing in life is change change is the most predictable thing whether you participate in it or not it must happen there are two kinds of people there are victims of change and there are initiators of change whether or not you want things to change it must change listen a time will come all your friends will rise and leave you if you don't change you will either be a victim of the change or a benefactor and an initiator in nigeria many people are the recipients of change the wealthy people are the initiators of it i choose to be in that category i refuse to just be a benefactor of change or just a a, a victim whatever happens i write it no sir we are going to pray rise up on your feet psalm 66 please psalm 66 verse 12 psalm 66 verse 12 media can you help us please psalm 66 please everybody rise this is a very serious moment right now it's a defining moment for many of us everyone read one to read It says we went through fire we went through water we went through times of hardship and turbulence but by your wisdom you have brought us into a wealthy place i announce to you koinonia there is a place called the wealthy place there is a place it's a place of plenty it's a land of abundance and it is absolutely left to you i read you a scripture that the profit of the end is for all. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of Sing it from your heart. Take over.
remember it as clear as yesterday the night 2004 lying down in my room at area BZ I remember getting up and making a vow I said Lord this is it if this is what it takes to be blessed then I insist that I must be blessed I read Miles Munro's books discovering your potential just that one book please hear me and I made a vow I told myself I know that it will not happen overnight but no matter how slow I am willing to pay the price I told myself even if I have to leap into the wealthy place I'm going there I made up my mind I said I'm tired I made up my mind that my children will never get up to see a cruel and wicked father because of prosperity. I made up my mind that I will never teach error in ministry because I'm looking for money. I made up my mind that I will never soil my hands into witchcraft or anything, the, the kind of money that will take me to hell. No. And for me to live in integrity, I knew that I would pay the price. I cry to the God of Israel. I remember it as clear as I'm looking at you. Tears were running down my eyes. And I said, oh God, I pray that you will help me. I pray that you will do something remarkable in my life. I continued like that, but nothing really happened. Watch this. We're about to round up. I want to challenge you. 2007 was when I signed out of poverty forever. Experientially, never to return there. Haven't done everything I did. I remember it was a Christ Embassy Church in Port Harcourt. That night, it was Reverend Owase, Evangelist Owase. And they had challenged people to sow and to do a lot of things. And I went that night. I will never forget. I had just a bag, my one bag that they gave me, and recharge card, a rechargeable lantern. Sorry. I carried everything and I zipped the bag and I laid my hands. I prayed with tears coming out of my eyes for three hours, non stop in tongues. I said, Lord, enough is enough. I'm tired of this situation. Listen. For as long as you keep massaging poverty in your life, I promise you it will never leave you. It takes aggression, the fatness of your neck to break that chain and that yoke. That's what I did. I carried that bag and I was on my way. I went to the church. There was an overflow, so I sat down outside. And while I sat down outside, when it was time to sow, people were sowing television, signing checks of millions. I didn't have all of that. But I was determined to break out of poverty. Watch this. I wanted to move and the Holy Spirit told me to stay back. Look at this embarrassment. After everybody had given, then the Holy Spirit told me you can now go. In a very seemingly disgraceful and embarrassing way, I carried my back. That was my Isaac, truly from the depth of my heart, home and abroad. As I dragged it to the altar, it wasn't to give the usher and say, please, I'm embarrassed. Help me drop it there. There were beautiful ladies in that church. But I said, none of you gave me money. I'm determined to break out of this poverty. Where you are determined, all these side distractions that carelessness here and there brings, you set your face like a flint. And I went there. When I went, I dropped it on the altar. Some people were laughing at me, of course, because the bag was not looking like something, I'm sure they would just send it to one of them. But that was my eyes. Listen. And I returned back 
to my seat outside I stood there and it was as if somebody was piercing my heart with a knife a thousand times and while I stayed there the Holy Ghost spoke to me and he said son from this day you have entered wealth that's what the Holy Spirit told me. he said from this day you have entered wealth I will never forget the next day 6 8, 6 10 on the dot in the morning somebody calls me shaking and says are you Joshua Selman I say yes I say who are you he said I don't know you but the Holy Spirit instructed me to sow a seed into your life please I need your account number I said what in the world is this a few days later the chairman board of trustee of this ministry he's a general now he called me and I think he transferred how much was it 400,000 or something into my account no 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 he first gave me 150,000 he said the Lord led me to tell me that you should buy a laptop and also buy a camera they were doing a pro within a span of about one week having prepared myself the door started opening mysteriously in less than four to five months I made my first million I will never forget how it felt that day not borrow not father's money not uncle and auntie not our money I just stood there and I said there is a wealthy place time will never change anything decisions do I'm going to challenge everyone to sow a seed if you don't believe in what I'm saying please stop we're rounding up the Lord led me to do this I'm going to challenge everybody I want you to sow a seed it's very important I can help you it's not about money you know that we're people of integrity here but I want to challenge you to sow a seed even if it's not something you can do now but I want to challenge you something that you will connect with and say Lord I'm tired please if you don't believe it you don't need to argue just just remain where you are but I have seen this is the correct context in which sowing of seed comes into place not just telling people so 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 no 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 when you guide them and this foundation is there then you will sow there is a minimum offering there is a minimum amount I can never give God less than that for the rest of my life I will be a wicked person no I put a benchmark not in the house of God again. I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart we have called it the year of the rain I don't want to fool you we are not native doctors there is a law please I want you to package the seed and lift it up now. take over take over we have come to the end of ourselves take over take over we have touched the end of ourselves hallelujah hallelujah we have come to the end of ourselves hallelujah hallelujah one more time just one time hey, take over take over i have come to the end of myself Hallelujah. While I was preparing for this meeting, I was about to give and I said, when the Lord told me, I said, Lord, how much do I give? When the Lord mentioned the amount, I said, wow, serious. What if it is for you? There is no amount. No amount. Because I will be a fool. I remember where God took me from. You have heard people say it outside. Now you are seeing somebody who is a testimony of it. It works. It's not just Mike Mudok saying it. It's not just Bishop Oyedepo. God is no respecter of persons. 
you are going to pray on this seed and say lord let this be the seed that will open up creativity go ahead and pray please pray lift your voice we're out of time prove me now here we say the lord if i will not open unto you the windows of heaven and give you ideas concepts creativity Please pray. Isaiah 45, please quickly. Isaiah 45, verse 2 and 3. Media, give us quickly. And then after that, we'll look at 48, verse 17. Please, please, please hurry up. Isaiah 45, verse 2 and 3. And then 48. Verse 17. Isaiah 45. I found this scripture in 2005 and it changed my life. One to read. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. Read on. And cut in sunder the bars of iron. Verse 3. Never forget this. And I will give you the treasures of darkness. The hidden riches of secret places. That I'm, you may know that I, the Lord, which calleth thee by name, I am the God of Israel. 48 verse 17. He says, I will give you the treasures. There are treasures in dark places. Hagar was in a place where there was water. But she thought she was in a wilderness. When the angel appeared, suddenly she saw the water. It takes this seed is the seed that will open you up to opportunities and open you up to all kinds of things read verse 17 everybody one to read I am the Lord thy God which teacheth thee to profit I can lead you to the business I can connect you to the people I can show you what financial vehicle can turn around your life. Lift your voice and pray one minute. Lord, with this seed, turn around my captivity. Are you praying, Koinonia? Like the streams of the naked. I am the Lord that teacheth thee. God can teach you to profit. God can teach you to profit. God can show you when many people are looking you can see the treasures of darkness the gold mine that you have been sitting on ask the Lord to open your eyes through this scene is the year of the rain 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 lord i'm tired of this financial level i'm tired of this dimension with this seed i ask for an outpouring of creativity an outpouring of insight Show me what I need to do to take that business to the next level. Show me the streams of income that I need to put my hand upon. And by favor, bring me resources, bring me people, bring me opportunities. They know not, neither will they understand. They grow in darkness and the earth is out of course. Have I not said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes.
there are things that is difficult to say God did it. You just say God did it because um, you don't want to look like a stupid person. You are in the midst of intelligent people and the obvious is to say God did it. But there are really things that everybody knows that this one is God's doing. This is what God wants to do tonight. If all you get is a job, men can do that. You don't have to be a Christian to get jobs. You just need to understand the laws of life. But that there is something that God can do. Show me a man that restores time. Show me a man that restores time. When time is gone, it's gone. No, but not in God's economy. Time is like a chess. He can take it forward and backward. Listen. You see, Ba. I tell you why God does not hurry. For many years, he gives men speed. But God does not hurry. And you have to be God to understand why he does not hurry. It does not make sense to hurry when you have this kind of authority. You only hurry because of something that can overpower you. Are we together now? If I have a bank and I'm hurrying up and you say, Apostle, hurry up five o'clock, they will lock the bank. I said, don't worry. So he said, see, I know I saw the face of that man. He will lock the bank. It's my bank. So the time was only supposed to be for you. When any time I come, the bank opens. Listen. Listen very carefully. So when you say, God, show up. Otherwise, men with God say, it doesn't make any difference. I've checked for the reasons why I should hurry. And I didn't find it. There is nothing that can put me under pressure to hurry. I am God. He comes in his majesty and sometimes he allows the pride of men to just continue while they speak God just comes and says what did men say and they will say that there is no rising in this family that the first person built a house at 45 and God says if I use the man who is 30 years old they would think he went to school let me use the mama that does not see I would do something with her and she would dedicate her house in two months. This is God for you. God is not interested in any miracle that will not allow the message of his glory to be written on it. There are times that when you bring challenges to God. is an insult. So he allows it to go deep enough to be worth his power. You don't bring to him what men can solve. You will confuse who solved it. Because while you were speaking to him, you spoke to men too. So that you don't mix the answer and just say, ah. Every time God wants to arise, even the sorcerers will not see that day. He will do something that makes everyone give up. And then he will now say, clear the way for me. Ah. This is God for you. Listen. My prayer is that after this meeting, eh, listen, you not only will receive miracles, but you begin to covet your life being a sign and a wonder. Don't just be a recipient of God's benevolence, but that you are like a canvas. When there are some paintings, when you see artists draw, you just ask, what was in the mind of this? Let God reveal to you what his mind can do. I don't like ordinary things in my life. I like things in my life that come with a statement. This is God. And someone will look at you and not even know how to smile again. He says, this thing, eh? it has to be God. He will just go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry for being foolish. You see, he has repented without your sermon. Your life was a sermon. They limited God in the wilderness. Listen, let me tell you this. Don't get used to pain. Don't get used to pain. There is an ability from heaven that can crush the gates of darkness. I know we are human beings and many times when things become increasingly uncomfortable, we build a theology around them to say it should continue. But this night, roll away the stone and let the God of heaven come in and show you that with men it is impossible. But with God, all things, all things are possible. Every time I pray for the miracle service, I don't pray for too many things. I don't pray, God, heal the sick, cast out devils. No, that's not my prayer. Lord, let there be something. Sign a signature 
upon someone's life upon someone's family you know i was spending a little time with my family in the afternoon and while we're talking about this my sister was speaking and said that um that it looks like this miracle service god is visiting families not just individuals he just wants to move past individuals remember i told you you are not free when your family is not free let me tell you sincerely he said as for me and my house if the jo the brothers of joseph all had dreams nobody would kill anybody it was because only one over how many had dreams and the rest said you are joking you saw the sun the moon and 11 stars bow But when everybody rises by the finger of God, then it is a testimony. I don't know who has said what about your life and about your family. But give God a few minutes tonight to answer them. God has an answer. My brothers and my sisters, the God we serve is not man. Don't get used to it. God is not a president of a ministry. God is not the CEO of a bank. God is not the CMD of a hospital. God is not a monarch on earth waiting to die for someone. No. He sits in the circles of the heaven by himself and manipulates all things according to the counsel of his will. You will do yourself harm tonight to sit down believing it will happen just as before. Come with your vessels increased and enlarged. Lord, I know you are stepping in. I know you are changing my life. It's June, but people have laughed at me. Where is the extraordinary fruitfulness? I'm still begging. I don't even have 250000 to pay rent. My prayer life has gone down. Ha! This God of heaven. My brothers and my sisters, it doesn't take time. When God opens his mouth from heaven, anything plus anything plus God is the answer he says should be. Your weakness plus God is whatever answer he says to be. Your limitation plus God is whatever answer he will be. I continue to pray and I say, Lord, let this ministry remain not just a place of signs and wonders, but a sign and a wonder itself. If you are looking for a salmon and you don't have data, just think about koinonia. And there is salmon is you are, you are seeing a marvelous God. Listen. By the grace of God, within the time God has given us, we will, we will disprove the pride of men in this world. All of those mundane rules that have been put by the arrogance of men that they claim even God should honor, God has sent us to disprove them. That whoever told you that you have to build a house from salary whoever told you you have to feed your children from pension whoever told you that it will take 20 years to know god whoever told you that your ministry must increase 10 members per week there is a generation that will answer the arrogance of men please don't get used to the natural course of things there is an advantage God programmed in the journey of the believer what I call systems of advantage. His mercy is a system of advantage. His favor is a system of advantage. It cannot happen to you the way it happens to men. Don't get used to it. I don't expect my life to be ordinary. I expect something spectacular. Every day like a soup opera, there is an episode of signs and wonders. Listen. That people can look at your life and say, let's watch God, what God will do this week. Because there has to be a message. It's impossible for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and there is no message. No, you are not a sign and a wonder. You have what it takes to do signs and wonders. But God wants you to be the sign yourself. To be like that star that shines in the east. That when men look at you, they say, what manner of God is this? Men whom the earth was not worthy of. See, there is nothing the devil can do about this. No. There is a kind of speed 
that God can bring to your life regardless of who loves you or who does not love you it doesn't play any role God just sits upon you with his jealousy and decides to make a statement let me tell you fearful is the man that God decides to use as a canvas to write a statement you will look for their downfall wasting your time they will just continue to rise held by the jealousy of God himself Are we together now? Please sit down. God can choose to love Jacob. God can choose to honor Jabez. God can choose to lift Rahab. God can choose to turn the story of Ruth around. God can choose to cause Abraham to be the father of nations. He is God. Who should he consult with? Where is the parliament that must accredit him? Listen. We live in a proud world where men sit down and make it look like I am the reason for your lifting. If you ignore me, you will die. And while it is true that men are pipes, we have 7.2 billion of them. That's enough variety for God to choose. No single man can get up in arrogance and pocket your destiny no I'm shaking off fear and unbelief from you so that when we begin to minister you don't just stand some of you may have written some things in your prayer request and left others because you have convinced yourself that God cannot go that far my brothers and sisters what does God need to do in your life again for you to believe that he is mighty. Hallelujah. I told the Lord something. I said, Lord, let my life be a sign and a wonder. A testament of what you can do with a man that loves you. Much more than celebrating a man like you did. It is, it is the celebration of God and the possibilities that he can birth on earth. That my life will not limit God. No way. I like the things men say cannot be done. If it is God that says it cannot be done, I will not even try it. Because it's a waste of time. But if it's man that says it cannot be done, I say, God, what do you say? Huh. When Jesus came, he said, you say this in your law, but this is what I say. You say this in your law, but this is what I say. Like he's speaking to someone. They said this in your family, but this is what I say. He can veto anything and turn a man's life around. Hallelujah. Someone gave me a very humorous testimony. I think it was yesterday. They had been trying to pursue something that has to do with the dad. And, um, uh, you know... I think the dad is, is, is in the force or something and they are just deprived that man for five years I think if I'm if I'm not mistaken no salary no benefits because some ammunition were missing and they traced to to him imagine a breadwinner of a family for about five years things went down and you know if, if he wins the case they will have to restore everything plus damages are we together and they kept manipulating manipulating and i think just yesterday i was told that was it yesterday or i think this week the verdict came out and came out in the father's favor i said you should start dancing in your household because whether the devil likes it or not everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Things never get missing. They only leave you. They are still on earth. Everything that leaves a man does not go out of the earth realm. It is only within a distance that is beyond your reach. There is a force from heaven that sustains an ability.
to call the things that be not and draw them. There is a force of attraction. I prophesied as I was commanded. It says, and the bones, they were all there. Just because you cannot see them does not mean they are not there. Everything you are looking for is looking for you too. And there is a force that can connect you to them. Please listen, I'm not just motivating you. The things that we have heard, the things we have seen, the things that our hands have handled. That who is he that saith the thing and it comes to pass? That God did not vet it and approve it? Let God be true and let every man, including your situation, be a liar. Listen to me. Please hear me. A miracle service is not just the time to pray for the sick. Not everybody is sick. You see the level of high blood pressure disturbing young people now? You see people talking like fools on the road. Someone in early 20s talking to himself, moving around. This our road from here to Abuja, almost every day someone is dying. Nobody leaves his house to die worry pastors collapse on stage i've told you that there is a technology that sends israel to egypt it's called hunger every time there is hunger israel must go to egypt to find bread genesis 42 please give it to us let's just read it i apologize the projection is not very clear but just see that scripture now everyone read if you can see it we're reading one and two. Ready? Read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was what? Corn. Where? In Egypt. Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Verse two. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. This is a prophet. But lack of corn was making him mortgage his children. Go to Egypt. I'm a prophet but we're about to die. And I hear that wherever there is corn, that's where people go to. Look, let's not lie to ourselves. Wherever there is corn, that is where people go to. Including a prophet. He had, because the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all. And that even the king is fed from it. When there is corn in Egypt, believers will have to go down there. We need time to serve the Lord. We need time to bear the revival that he wants to bring. We need time to pursue the purposes of the kingdom. But that time cannot be given to you when you spend your life looking for corn in Egypt. It's a cost to go down to Egypt. But if that is the only place that has corn, then you will have to go down to eat. And then there arose another Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. And the people of God got into servitude and slavery. Don't mind the ignorant people who say it doesn't matter. You just serve God like that. According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Everyone say after me, life godliness life godliness there are things that pertain unto godliness your character your work with god your prayer life your spiritual development those are things that pertain unto godliness but there are things that pertain unto life your children's school fees your accommodation the well-being that any man who is unable to cater for his family according to scripture has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So when the devil wants to discourage you as a man of God, you're preparing a sermon and here comes your son with a PTA letter. And your eyes, the letter is usually typed, except where the money will be. They write it with biro, and the price is doubled. You stand there wanting to kill your son. Why has the school fees been doubled? Said they just gave me to give you, and you look at it, your salary is not increased, nothing else is increased, but the bills are rising. The devil wants to send you to Egypt. A time will come what, what you would not do yesterday, you will now do tomorrow on the strength of the pain, 
Hunger can take men to Egypt. Hallelujah. A dear man of God called me, I think two weeks or so. I don't know him so much. And from one of these nations. And he called me and was lamenting. He said, Apostle, pray for me. Our ministry is under serious financial attack. He said, right now, honestly, the way things are, we may not even be able to hold our service because the bills, you know, things are going down economically and the givings of the people also seem to have followed. And, you know, I got angry in my spirit. I said, this is the kind of news Satan wants because, you see, very soon, the devil will bring one rich man who will pocket that ministry because of one million or one five or ten million or whatever it is that he gives. You will lose your voice lose your relevance lose your integrity on the platter of hunger was it not hunger that made Esau to sell his birthright only an irresponsible ministry will not address the issue of hunger that is going on there are many things to address but hunger should be one of them believers are hungry they need a technology that is higher than what has been proposed let me tell you there is a part which no fowl knoweth the whelps of the lion has not gotten there there are dimensions reserved for these times when god will bring out as a display of his intelligence do you not know that the strategy of saving 20 percent was god's intelligence it's not just an economic strategy there is always a reservoir in god's intelligence for times when people cry when the saints cry god will say show them that the wisdom of god is inexhaustible health care is one of the devourers in our world today do you know how much it takes to treat people once your son is sick you are crying already because you know how much does it take we have so many doctors here one of our doctors came and I asked him to check a woman and when he brought the list for the x-ray, I said, I will buy that machine. Oh. I said, I said do you, I, 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 and open an x-ray, an x-ray place. I mean, how much? Not the whole body. I don't know what part of the body it was. But when I saw the bills, I said for x-ray and almost every day, someone has to go there. If you are collecting 50,000 naira, and you use 30,000 for x-ray there is no reason why that child will give you joy are we together anything that child does will annoy you and then help that child let him not take first or second or third you will almost kill the child there are real issues that we cannot laugh at real issues and this night God is determined to rise up and not only step in but turn things around John chapter 10 and verse 10. Thank you. John chapter 10 and verse 10, please. It says, the thief cometh not. There is a name Satan is called. And here he is called the thief. Are we together? If someone knocks your gate and you say, who is that? He said, the thief. You don't need to ask him what tribe, what gender. You will call the police immediately and say, there is a thief. There is an armed robber in front of my house. And Jesus is speaking here. And he says, the thief cometh not. That means you will never see him around. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So everywhere you see stealing, killing and destruction is a signature. The thief, Satan. He comes into a joyful family. Are we together? Happy husband. Come my dear. Happy wife. When the thief comes in between them, he must scatter everything. One flimsy excuse or the other. He will come in between business partners and shred them. When Satan passes a place, you know this is him. He will leave his signature. Stealing, killing, destruction. We would be in trouble if Jesus stopped there. But he says, I am come. Mm. He didn't say, I have come. I am has come. To bring life and that you have that life more abundantly, lavishly. I am come that you may have life 
I am come that ye may have solutions. I have come to show you that there is a way out of this. I am come to show you that there are possibilities. Are we together now? Now the last thing I want to say before we begin to pray. I will continue to teach this because repetition is the key to persuasion. The Bible says, according as his divine power. Please give it to us. That's second, first, um, second Peter chapter 1 from verse 2, please. Grace and peace, verse 2, be multiplied unto you at, through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. It says, according as his divine power hath given us. So what gives us in this kingdom? His divine power. Never forget this. It is not faith. Faith is a channel that allows his divine power to pass. The agency, the force that is responsible for connecting us with spiritual possibilities is his divine power. For many years, there has been an argument about the workings of faith and the anointing. There is no argument there. Are we together? Faith is the pipe that the power of God flows to to carry supernatural solutions to you. If there is no faith, there is no channel of the power from the throne room to your situation, it will not be possible. You don't choose faith or the power of God. That's not a theology taught in the Bible. He never taught any of them in isolation. His divine power. Every request on your list will be solved by his divine power now let me teach you this i've taught you again what is on you is what controls the results around you please never forget this the results around you do not fabricate themselves the results around you are mirrors they are a reflection of the kind the level the dimension of the grace that is upon you so I can know the grace on you by looking at the possibilities in your life. I can know what grace has come upon you by looking at what changes. It is impossible to increase in grace and your possibilities remain the same. No. The testimonies that recycle around your life are an attest. They, are, they attest to the fact that this is the level and the extent of grace. Hear me. Every door can open. It just depends on the grace asking it to open. Everybody is a giver. It depends on the grace that asks them to give. Someone can refuse to bless you and yet carry a millionaire and meet someone else and say, give me the privilege of blessing you. Nobody is really stingy. The problem is that these possibilities don't happen in the earth dimension. They are realities that are finished in the realm of the heavens and only executed. The earth is a realm of execution. The same way your body is. The anointing and the grace on your life is what controls the possibilities around you. Please listen to me. His divine power. There are doors that have refused to open. The doors are not stubborn. The doors are only obedient to the last instruction. And since the anointing speaking to it is not that high, the door will remain obedient to the last instruction. The day a higher authority speaks, that door will open, I assure you. Please don't generalize challenges. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. This is a message of hope for you to hear. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. Even the king could not solve the hunger problem of Samaria. Here comes the prophet. He did not come to solve the problem. He said, ah, okay, I see that there is a situation. Everyone was hungry except the king and the prophet. He said, by this time tomorrow. Then a foolish man said, even if God will open the window of heaven, how will these things be? And he says, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. I believe in the power of God. I've seen what the power of God can do. Stop wasting your time trying to change things physically. Creation has never been disobedient. Creation is the most obedient entity you can find. The money you are looking for is not disobedient. There is an unction that calls it. If it's not there, it is authorized to leave you. Creation is obedient. 
when Noah was ready to open the ark when he opened the ark there was a grace that came on every animal by themselves the Bible never said Noah went to the wilderness to chase them animals with no higher intelligence they found their way to the ark if animals can find their way to the ark why should your destiny helper find it difficult to find you why should breakthrough find it difficult to Noah just stood there and allow the grace to walk you rest only when the grace walks let me tell you life is hard when you are walking on your own in this kingdom we don't walk with our hands our hands only help us to receive the grace when it comes you enter your sabbath are you getting what i'm saying now the power of god is the spiritual mechanism responsible the signs and wonders that will happen in this place right now the healings and the miracles and the breakthroughs they will happen according as his divine power acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth the information is not that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed with the holy ghost and with power he says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him there are people inside there are people outside there are people standing in such sacrifice waiting for God it will be very wicked to share the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and tell everybody bye bye return back with your challenge no I want you to believe God tonight and insist Lord whatever will come upon me must come upon me whatever must change must change whatever must grow must grow whatever must die must die when there is no expectation it becomes wrong for God to visit you because one of the things that he gave men seven benefits given to man at creation one of it is the right to choose the will that God gave man is a fundamental right it's not for Christians once you are a man you were given the right to choose salvation even at the detriment of your going to hell was left for your choice god will never 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 violate your right to choose i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing i can only advise you choose life i said before you prosperity and poverty i said before you success and failure i said before you spiritual growth and, and a low level of spirituality is up to you to choose. I choose life oh, and everything that comes with it. I choose speed. I choose increase. I choose honor. I choose dignity. I choose open doors. I choose open heavens. It's a choice. And if you're a family man here, as for you and your house, you can't choose for the whole world, but you can choose for your house. That the favor of God can rest upon your life tonight. And that within the next one month, things will shift in your life in a way and a manner that will surprise you. If you do not believe these things exist, you are not a Christian. A Christian is not just one who is born again. A Christian is one who has submitted to the ideologies of the kingdom as the ultimate value system of your life. Hallelujah. I'd like you to believe God don't say I've come for miracle service before you see let me tell you the truth my assignment as a man of God is not to invite you my assignment as a man of God is to continue to grow in grace so that the things that would not answer to me in January must answer in June otherwise what is the superiority of growth if the same thing that did not answer to me three months ago refuses to answer now i'm only maintaining my spiritual level i'm not growing there was a time when some spirits did not answer to the apostles they went to jesus asking a question and they said why couldn't we do this he said this kind there is a technology for taking this one out see let me tell you sincerely there is enough grace to wipe the tears in your eyes 
there is enough grace to turn the tables around the anointing works like money i've taught you it can only solve the problems that are lower than it the anointing does not generically solve every problem no no you have to understand this it's very important to know i have let me just steal five ten minutes to explain this look at this this is one thousand naira. look at this and if i give you this one thousand naira, it can buy a bottle of water is that true it can even buy you lunch or dinner depending on where you eat but this cannot buy you a car this cannot pay a child's school fees but it is still money so if you want to pay a child's school fees you need more of the same thing to the level that meets the demand every challenge in life has a level of grace attached to it not every grace solves every problem if every grace solves every problem then it doesn't make sense to grow in grace Acts chapter 2 they were filled with the Holy Ghost Acts chapter 4 they were filled with the Holy Ghost again to what end it says that you stretch forth your hands and that miracles signs and wonders be wrought in the name of your Holy Son there was a dimension of grace requiring a higher level of the anointing Gehazi carried his rod, the rod of Elisha, and he came and laid it on the dead body. The body did not rise. But when the prophet came, that dead body came back to life. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. I know men of God have prayed for you. They are not fake just because you did not get the result. It is a reflection of the extent and the level of grace. And God grants the privilege of grace. And that's why as men of God, we must continue to grow in grace. So that what we could not solve yesterday, we can now solve tomorrow. That is the proof of growth. Are we together now? We are going to pray tonight. It's going to be a very quick walk in this place. I trust God and I believe that in the name of the Lord, that things will so change in your life, it will surprise you. Please rise up on your feet lift your voice and begin to mention specifics unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come rise up on your feet and please pray oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah yahweh yeah. Oh yeah, I say. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. my life around turn my life around tonight turn my ministry around turn my family around is someone praying turn things around shalabarata <laughs> katos Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to be very fast. I minister by the Spirit. And the goal is for God to solve people's problems and deal with all the issues that are not of God. Praise the Lord. It will be very, very fast. I'm not sure I may have the time to prophesy tonight because I want us to finish very fast. Our time is gone. But let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven please don't be used to your situation if you're a visitor here and you came come insisting that i did not leave where i left to be here only to return back with stories uh-uh 
that is not the God that we serve. Are we together? Hallelujah. There are three people. The power of God is coming on outside. Overflow one. Please, I'd like you to bring them out here. Please, let's start very quickly. We're going to pray. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. A very strong anointing. Please bring them very quickly and then and then we'll pray. And then we'll pray. When you have them, please bring them very quickly. The Lord is already moving. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I want you to believe, believe that God will step in and turn your life around. Hallelujah. Turn your life around. From the back, right to the center, I'm seeing the power of God come on someone now. From the back, right to the center. From the back, right to the center. Please bring them out right now. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. An end comes to every oppression. An end comes to every oppression. An end comes to every oppression. An angel of the Lord is still standing here. I'm still seeing this robe. Right now, it's like smoke just moving across. Right now, from the top to the back. Please bring them out. An end comes. God is stepping in to locate people by His Spirit. Remember the Bible says, Now the Lord is that Spirit. And it says, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I command every oppression of darkness. I want to pray now. I see fire in this place. This is what I'm seeing. By the spirit of the... And listen. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. That every spirit that is other than the spirit of the Christ. Responsible for any challenge and any predicament. It must let you go now inside and outside online are you ready father let there be deliverance right now one two three shout jesus jesus i cause every power bring them out right now every oppression of darkness it must go now it must go now oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh, Yahweh. Oh yeah, yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Please bring them out quickly. I'm still praying. The Lord is showing me a vision of a padlock in the spirit. I'm seeing a padlock and I'm seeing what looks like a key about to open it at the count of three again you're going to shout that name I see opening opening doors that have been closed are you ready now one two three be open now every closed door be open now be open now be open now, now. close doors over families Close doors over ministries. Close doors over destinies. I decree and declare. Be open. Be open now. Bring them out, please. Be open now. Be open now. In the name of Jesus. Overflow one, two, three. Across the road. Online, be free now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing 
I'm seeing like stones in a vision. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm seeing like a strange fire. These are representations of altars. Listen, there are families that have been covenanted to all kinds of ordinances. Fire is about to come from heaven right now. In the name of Jesus, you are ready to shout now. Father, every family here that is under any kind of ordinance, I come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let fire from heaven liberate that family right now. One, two, three. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, we blot out handwritings. We blot out handwritings. Bring them out. I cause altars, yokes of darkness, ordinances, speaking against the people of God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Hey. Oh yeah, yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Oh yeah, yeah, say. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God go to the eastern states. The eastern states. Right now God is bringing deliverance. The east, Abia, Anambra state, Enugu state, Eboi state. I'm seeing an anointing right now. Rest on people within that state. Let there be liberty right now. Let there be liberty right now. You belong to that state the power of God is coming upon you right now right now even the lawful captives shall be delivered it's a sign and a wonder how God does it I'm seeing the map the east God is bringing liberty hallelujah the Lord is showing me the map again I'm seeing an arrow and I'm seeing it Go to Benway, Benway State. Right now, I stretch my hands. Benway, Benway, that anointing you are from that state. Any ordinance tying your destiny must let you go right now. Must let you go right now. This is by the authority of the kingdom. Benway State, Benway State, liberation right now in the name of Jesus Christ. release their destinies right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah I'm seeing fire just within this circumference in front there are two families God wants to set free right now within this circumference I'm seeing fire coming upon them right now bring them out right now by the spirit of grace in the name of jesus the son of the living god things must change in your life my friend this young man lift your hands where you are there is oil being poured on your head right now right now in the name of jesus the Lord is removing something that looks like an arrow from your head. Let it go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let him go now. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Fire is still falling here. I'm seeing this deliverance is especially for women. 
an entity comes to molest you in the night you go to bed and a strange spirit just comes right now with the name of Jesus the Lord is asking me to just count two and at the count of two that fire is coming on people right now one two let that fire come now liberation from ordinances of darkness every stranger that comes to manipulate your destiny be free now all those in front here I decree the power that holds you I come by the rod of a higher priesthood at the count of three let them go now one two three go leave them now release their destinies right now let there be restoration everything that has been stolen from hell I command a restoration by the spirit of the living God by the spirit of grace the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty be free right now please open your mouth and begin to pray everything that must leave your life insists it must leave your life now the angel of the Lord is removing arrows. I'm seeing arrows, arrows coming out of people. That's what I'm seeing. Arrows, 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 arrows right now. Right here, arrows, arrows, go now. Arrows are being removed out of people. In the name of Jesus, Madam, be free right now. Be set free now. The Lord is setting someone free here right now. Someone in this room, I'm seeing fire just resting on someone. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, everything that has held you bound, be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those outside, keep praying. Something is resting upon you right now. The Lord asked me to come to overflow one. I want to pray for you. There is an anointing right now. I stretch my hands. Fire from the front to the back. Everyone under any kind of yoke. Right now, as I'm passing, be free. Be free. Help them, please. Out. Now. Release their destinies. Release their destinies now. Please help them. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. That yoke must let you go now. That yoke must let you go now. I'm passing this road right now. Once I pass you, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is taking everything that is not of God. Release them now. Release their destinies now. Release their destinies now. Let that fire rest upon you right now. Everything that has refused to open, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Close doors. Be open now. Be open now. Now listen, overflow two. I may not touch you, but in the name of Jesus, I pass your robe. Except God is not God. If there is anything sitting on your destiny, it must let you go. Right now, be free. Be free. I bring you the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. Open up your gates. Your gates. Gates be open. Destiny be open now. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open now in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Fire is resting on this road. Just right there. I'm seeing someone, the oppression of your family is coming to an end right now. I stand by this grace. Karis Kobaru Katosh, help her please. Anyone here, anything that is not of God sitting on your destiny, right now at the count of three, all of you just, I'm seeing fire right now.
and I'm seeing chains broken from people's legs right now be be set free now be set free now be set free now be set free now there is a lady here God is saying it is over right now I'm seeing an anointing liberating a lady's family right now help them please whether you're an usher or not please if anybody's falling close to you so they don't injure themselves hallelujah please shift that lady be free now I'm pointing my hands to her I command that devil to leave your family and your destiny now in the name of Jesus Christ begin to pray begin to pray overflow three pray pray overflow three something is about to release your destiny now something is about to release your destiny now something is about to release your destiny now overflow three i came with an anointing at the count of three shout jesus fire is falling from the top to the bottom one two three go 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 now every yoke every altar be free now bring them out whether you are an usher or not bring them out every oppression of darkness right to the back i declare by the anointing of the holy spirit be free now be free now bring them out I'm seeing all kinds of spirits. I command every spirit that is not of the Christ. Release God's people right now. At the count of three. I'm seeing fire resting on people. And I'm seeing a number 41. 41 people. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Are you ready? One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Right now, be free by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be free right now every door that has refused to open I open that door right now in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah there are 27 people here the grace for speed is coming upon them I don't know who you are but right now the grace for speed I stand by the anointing from the front to the back right now in the name of Jesus receive that anointing right now speed I release speed over your life over your destiny receive speed in the name of Jesus speed in the name of Jesus. hallelujah overflow three hear me there are people here the Lord is telling me no one rises in your family when they get to a level something brings them bow and the Lord is saying I should shift you by prophecy I stand right now I don't know where they are but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you right now in the name of Jesus I'm seeing the number 17 Lord I don't know where they are here but in the name of Jesus I declare move to the next level right now I shift you to the next level right now. I shift you to the next level right now. Hallelujah. I'm looking at 14 people here. You have the call of God upon your life. And right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to locate you. 14 people. Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, Deborahs. Lord, where are they? Let that man to locate you now. The call of destiny that is upon you. Oh, prophet of God, may that fire find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. hallelujah there are 15 people here overflow three 
the spirit of revelation is coming on you unusual insight i don't know where they are but right now i'm seeing light not fire light light coming on people 15 people step into a new dimension of the revelatory grace right now in the name of jesus Yahweh, Yahweh. hallelujah praise the lord main auditorium please lift your hands main auditorium lift your hands i'm seeing seven people main auditorium lift your hands i'm seeing seven people the grace for speed i'll pray it on everybody but the main auditorium there is a grace for unusual speed on seven people they will begin to run by the anointing right now please hold them so they don't injure themselves main auditorium i stretch my hands at the count of three like elijah may that grace come one two three receive that grace right now in the main auditorium step into the anointing for speed in the name of jesus overflow three lift your hands every door that has refused to open over your ministry over your life held down by witchcraft in the name that is above all names at the count of three i'm seeing doors open in the spirit one two three let that door be open now be open now be open now the lord wants to avert death over a family this year alone between last year and this year four people have died in your family four people have died and in the name of jesus christ an anointing is coming upon you right now let death be averted now in the name of jesus now listen all of you at overflow three and the extension there whatever must live your life as i'm passing this place please i am releasing my faith open your mouth now and declare lord it must live my life now go ahead go ahead pray please all those in front here the spirit that ties your destiny i command at the count of three let them go now one two three go 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 out of their lives out of their destinies make sure you are praying make sure you are praying the power of God is resting on someone here there's an anointing coming on someone right here in the name of Jesus there's an anointing coming on someone here and the Lord is saying it comes to an end that family crisis comes to an end the power of God is resting on someone by my left here right now receive that anointing let it go in Jesus name be free right now in Jesus name the power of God is resting on someone here right here I'm seeing an anointing right now it's a prophetic grace there's someone here a prophetic grace is coming upon you right now by my left here in the name of Jesus drink of that anointing drink of that fountain may that grace rest upon your life right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the Lord says it is over over right now by the power of the Holy Spirit look at me my friend the Lord is taking you to a height and a dimension in the spirit I lay my hands on you drink of that grace in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I'm seeing what looks like smoke just this region where I'm where you're looking at me right now there are four people I'm seeing the power of God like a wind just coming on them just this road right now Lord where are they I stretch my hands right now right now the power of the Holy Ghost is coming on those people and the Lord is saying it is over he's taking away captivity four of you by the spirit of grace let it be over right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus there is a family here 
marriage does not happen in that family but I'm seeing fire rest right now the embargo is being broken now the embargo is being broken whoever those people are an anointing is coming on you now for the sake of your family that yoke of marital delay is breaking right now is breaking right now in the name of Jesus please lift your voice and pray everybody pray in the spirit pray in the spirit there is one of you among those standing here there is a call of God upon your life an anointing is coming upon you you will be mightily used by God where is that person spirit of the living God the hand of God just near the gate here the power of God is coming upon that person right now a new dimension in the spirit the eyes that see and the ears that hear may you step into that level in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ my friend touch this gentleman for me lift your hands I stretch my hands over you I command I'm seeing chains all over your body I command those chains to give way now in the name of Jesus release him now let him go now by the power of the Holy Ghost I cut those chains I'm seeing chains from your head to your toe let me pray for those here please all of you are here I'm the Lord is opening my eyes and from here to the fence I'm seeing snakes and I'm seeing five people there is a major deliverance that is coming for a family right now in the name of Jesus may the anointing of the Holy Spirit locate those ones now five of you right now these spirits my God my God I'm seeing something living right now release them now release no matter how long release them now it is written that even the lawful captives shall be delivered I declare emancipation now by the Spirit of the Living God You are a gala. I want to pray for you. Are you alone? If you came here alone, what do you do? I want to pray for you. The spirit of death is upon you. And the Lord is saying I should pray for you. So that those dreams you used to have, seeing dead people, is that true? You have dreams and... Too much, yes. The Lord is saying that you are going to be free from it right now. I declare in the name of Jesus, by the power of the hope. In the... There is, there is someone here. Hi. Academic delay over your family is breaking right now. I just... Please don't be carried away acting this thing. I shunnedly to help people experience God. I'm praying. I don't know where that family is. But now scattered in this congregation, I stretch my hands. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit family right now. I'm seeing a family here, none of you has a job, none of you. There are even a few graduates but nobody at all. It's like the doors of jobs don't open. Right now you're going to sense fire come up your hands. Real physical fire. And the Lord is saying by that, help them. By that, that embargo is broken. Lord, I, I declare right now, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest upon those people and bring emancipation. Everyone lift your voice and begin to pray in the Spirit. Please begin to pray in the spirit. Don't say you are not inside. God can locate you from any direction. God can locate you from any direction. Bring me this lady, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, delay ends in your life. I stretch my hands and I pray. Delay, help her. The Lord is taking away witchcraft from this family. I command that devil, go now. See, it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. Just release your faith. In the name of Jesus, be free right now. Be free right now. My friend, the call of God is upon your life. There is, that is coming upon you. It's a healing anointing. I stretch my hands. May that grace begin to work effectually. Now, step into that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Among all of you from here to here, the grace for speed is coming on two people. Listen. Those two people will start running now. Please hold them. Hold them so they don't enjoy themselves. That anointing right now. All across. Two you can't control yourself. Hold them please. Whether you are an usher or I release that grace. Speed. Two people. Strange speed. God is ending delay right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing two of you a prophetic anointing you are not prophets but you have been desiring this grace the grace to see from here right to where that lady with the veil is I don't know where they are but I stretch my hands may that anointing find you right now accuracy of sight and help them help them please help them please in the name of Jesus Christ name of Jesus Christ name of Jesus Christ an angel of the Lord is taking away reproach there is a family here the Lord is saying the captivity ends now an anointing is coming upon you right now it's now in the name of Jesus someone here is it your sister has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb who is that listen where where is she at home what of you come how long who has had three miscarriages three miscarriages go and tell her she will have a baby girl that the Lord is giving her a baby girl in the name of Jesus I pray for you both in the name of Jesus let it come to an end right now let that captivity come to an end in the name of Jesus there's someone here your family has a court case who is that please court case don't make sure you don't tell us please they want to kill you because of what what did you do what did you do hold on I have to where are you from where is that I have to pray for you you have bad friends hold on let me talk to you eh? you have very bad friends bad friends you need to be delivered this is not even your whole life eh? you know what I'm saying right you need to repent eh? listen when I make an altar call run and come because the real salvation is you it's not the issue of court case of this you you have friends that are criminals and we have to pray you hear what I'm saying God is locating you to help you. Listen, let me tell you, my dear people, I mean, when God locates us like this, is because he wants to help. There's somebody here. Your name is Sarah. Where is that person? Sarah. Hold on, please. Don't, don't. Let me just prophesy. I, I, my heart is full. God wants to visit people. Stand up. Who is Sarah? Where are you from? Huh? Where are you from? No, no, we're state of origin. I want to pray for you. Who is Godia? Yeah. Godia. The Lord wants to visit you right now. Acting God truly wants to change your life. Yeah. I want to pray for you. Whose mother is in the hospital? I'm seeing someone's mother lying down in the hospital here. Your mom? Come. I'm seeing that down in Port Harcourt. Port, uh, yes, I Port Harcourt. You came from Port Harcourt. Go on. I'm going to pray. For, do I know you? I've never seen you. I want to pray for you. God is turning your situation up as you're standing let your heart be open your people may be far don't ever think I'm just because I come outside like this to encourage you to let you know that you must not make it inside anywhere are we together the power of God is going to come upon you a loud shout that will be the person I'll prophesy to right now in just those outside here it's not something you can stand this is a sign and a wonder from the spirit of God that's not the shout. The shout is coming. It's a loud shout. Please bring the person when that happens. That's the shout. Bring the person. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
my friend lift your hands Jesus come do you what are you doing what do you do of God your own church you are assisting someone you came here not just to receive a miracle for your mother but you came to take fire stand up why you came listen to me you are going to go back and you will step into a diamond signs and wonders that will surprise you Sarah in the name that is above all names every oppression over your family I come against it right now I'm still hearing that name go dear who is that hold on please hold on where are you from huh you are from Kat Saminaka hold on please your sister blood sister same father same mother you've been praying for God to locate you it's okay you hi the spirit of death is over your family huh? that's what I'm saying I'm seeing you dreaming and dreaming of dead people they will come and they are calling you sometimes they are saying you should eat together this is the spirit of death coming on the family but in the name of Jesus I use them as a point of contact if there is anybody under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is coming upon you help her I cut spirit now name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing a family money does not stay in your house no matter what happens once resources enter you love God but resources something must happen either sickness or they will steal it or something will come up I'm seeing what looks like a blue flame and it's resting on at least five people and the Lord is saying an end comes to financial hardship father where are they right now I stretch my hands let that anointing locate you right now in the name of Jesus Christ please lift your voice and begin to pray my friend your hands shout Jesus as loud as you can an end comes now in the name of Jesus Christ please lift your voice and pray in the spirit everyone my dear look at me I command that spirit to leave you now of darkness must let you go in Jesus name lift your voice and pray everyone please pray pray in the spirit pray in the spirit please pray in the spirit pray in the spirit everyone madam help this woman so that she doesn't fall with it I command everything that is not of God to let you go now release this woman's destiny now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus oppression leaves right now someone here there is a spirit that has oppressed your family it must go now I command that devil of darkness help her please that spirit must leave now in the name of Jesus please everyone pray in the spirit everyone pray in the spirit God is visiting us right now one media person here there is an anointing resting on someone the Lord is bringing to end the captivity on your family I'm seeing it by the Spirit of God captivity coming to an end in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus let it end now by the Spirit of the Living God let it end now in the name of Jesus my friend I'm seeing what what looks like a towel on you and the Lord is wiping away infirmity in the name of Jesus infirmity let it go right now please make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus the son of the living God the spirit of death there is a family here that spirit must go now the spirit of death release them now in the name of Jesus release them now release them now the spirit of death there will be no obituary I command that devil to go now madam excuse me madam look at me come are you a man of God come you too please come 
I don't know you. Where are you coming from, sir? Where do you, what do you have to do with Adamawa? Is it Anambra? Huh? Who is from Anambra? Me, from Anambra State. You came all the way. Ah. There is a grace to see that God is going to be delivering to you. Number two, there is speed in ministry. That God, I don't know you, sir. I've not seen you. You're, you're together. You're a man of God, too. You're a man of God. You're a ministry. Can I pray for you, sir? Because I'm seeing this anointing, strange anointing come on you. You will go back and it's going to be fire all the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. Step into that grace in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, you will never be the same. Can I pray for you, sir? By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, drink of this wine, you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Mommy, let me pray for you. Hold on, please. Please stand up. Stand up. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. 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 The Lord is visiting. The Jennifer I'm seeing, you are outside. You are holding a child. Jennifer. Jennifer. Is there someone like that? Oh, please oh, confirm. I, what's your name? They always confirm before you allow Jennifer, them. Sir. Jennifer, is this your child? Yes, sir. Where are you coming from? From this is my state. Huh? From GRA. No, no, where, where are you coming? Kaduna State. Kaduna State. Yes. I want to pray for you. So that the spirit that makes marriages to not work in your family will not catch up with you. Does Amen. it make sense what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Well, this boy has a great destiny. Forget about whatever it is that has happened or not happened. I want to pray for you. The Lord located you to bless you. What's his name? Fortune. 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 Yes, sir. I will pray for you. Mama, where are you coming from? I come from Togo. You came from Togo? Yes, just yesterday. Just yesterday? Yes. What are you trusting God for? Ah, my daughter in America. She's one that sent me to you. She has been seeing you in her dream. You have done so many things for her in the dream. Then she said that I must come so that show me you will not get her. She's asking for contract. That is contract that she's seeking for. She... Just calm down, madam. You came all the way from Togo. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what God will do in your life. First, not even just your daughter. Eh? Leave your daughter's issue. God is going to bring your daughter, but it's you. First, that back pain. Jesus. Huh? That back pain that you have. You get up in the morning and there's severe back pain. That back pain will leave you now. That's number one. Number two, the dead people you see in your dream. Huh? Sometimes you go to bed and you see dead people, people who have died, but they are alive talking to you. I need to pray for you. And then number three, God is going to visit your daughter. Tell her the month of August is a month of breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, be free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here, please? Sir? You are a teacher. Did you apply for a job? Yes. Where? Uh, uh, International. Because I'm seeing a letter and I'm seeing congratulations. It, hold on. Ah, you are a teacher. Yes, sir. Where? With uh, KHMS. What is Dambo International? It's a school. Did you apply there? Yes. Like I'm seeing ladies. that they are going to give you a job. Huh? I will pray for you, sir. Because this teaching you are doing is only for a while. There is a grace of entrepreneurship upon you. And that grace is going to come and God will shift you to a dimension. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. How many children do you have? One. Just one. Yes, sir. I have one no, hold on. Don't be embarrassed, eh? I'm seeing one child, then the vision changes, and I'm seeing two again. Huh? You have one, you have two. What is the mystery? Explain. Before I married her, I have a son outside. Okay, before you married her, you have a child. Yes, the, yes sir. Okay, I want to pray. Don't, don't make sure you treat the child with honor and grace. All the children that came out from you, are great children you understand please don't fight that child there eh? madam you hear what i'm telling you yes 
I know that we live in a, a society that sometimes all kinds of troubles can come, but may God grant you the grace to manage things well. Sir, there is a grace of wealth that is upon you. Please look at me. It looks like you are a teacher, but your destiny is not a teacher. You are a real kingdom financier, and there is a grace for finances that should come upon you. Please look at me. You see this woman? She's a good woman. Don't ever let the devil use the face of any devil and use her face to make it look as if this is an evil woman. And don't let any prophet anywhere tell you this woman is a witch. In the name of Jesus, I tell you, God gave you a good woman. She's a good woman. Madam, you are a good woman. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you, sir. Please hold my hands. In the name that is above all names, I open up every closed door over your life and destiny. I shift you to that realm of wealth in Jesus' name. The person, look up, please. The person who comes to molest you when you sleep, it comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus, every fraternity with darkness is gone now and gone forever. In the name of Jesus. I don't know why, why are they here. Who is Sarah? Are you married? We are not more together. Huh? I have two children, but we are not together with you. You are not together with your husband? Yes. Were you married? No. This is what I'm saying. Come. You need to be delivered, eh? If not, I'm seeing four children. You will add two more, and yet you are not married. I'm not, I hope you are not feeling bad. I hope you are not embarrassed. God reveals so that he can redeem, eh? You are not a bad woman. You are not an immoral woman. It's a spirit. You hear what I'm saying? Come, let me pray for you. Aye. The power of God is coming on one of you here. One of you standing here now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on one right now. It's not something you can resist. I'm, this, I'm seeing it in the spirit that the power of God is going to come upon one of you. And when that happens, then I'm going to prophesy to that one person. Right now, it's an anointing from heaven that is coming upon one of you here. And the Lord is saying that he's taking away sickness from the midst of you. Taking away sickness. My dear, in the name of Jesus, is it the same man that has the children? Yes. Huh? Yes. Why doesn't he want to marry you? He didn't pay for my dowry. He didn't pay for your dowry? Yes. Go and tell him that I said he should pay for your dowry. Huh? Dowry is not building project. He should pay for your dowry and give these children a chance. Please. At this level, it's no longer about their comfort. The children need a father. May God grant him grace and give him money to pay your dowry and be a good man in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing written in the air, polygamy. God is breaking that spirit now. No, no, no. Just please, just keep quiet. I'm ministering. There is a spirit of polygamy. Everybody in that family, you can't do with one man alone or one woman alone. That anointing is locating people right now to break the spirit. It's a covenant. It's not a desire. Coincidences continue to put themselves together to lead people to trouble. Right now, that spirit, please help them. In the name of Jesus, inside, outside, everywhere, the spirit of polygamy is being broken right now. The spirit of polygamy is being broken right now. Sir, let me pray for you. Where are you coming from, sir? Port Harcourt, what do you do? Do business. You do business. But things are not going well. Huh? If I don't pray for you, I'm seeing you in the court because of money, debt. Huh? I hope you're not embarrassed. You came here so that I pray for you. What are you trusting God for? I'm trusting God for breakthrough in my business. Breakthrough in your business. First, your... My wife, uh, I've listened to your tape for about seven days now. And the last dream she had, you came to pray for her. And she insisted that you come through the night today. I will pray for you. More than business breakthrough, sir, is your relationship with God. Do you understand? Please don't be embarrassed, but your relationship with God. In this kingdom, we prosper as our souls prosper, not at the detriment of our soul. So that there's, there's too much spiritual distraction around your life. I pray that God will cause your heart to love him more than money in the name of Jesus and that in so doing, he will bless you and lift you. I decree and declare, I don't know why all of you came, but in the name of Jesus, I declare 
that everything that is not of God leaves you right now. Where is this lady from? Come, where are you from? I'm from Nesara Ostage. You are from where? Nesara. How many are you? I'm from extended family where are many. Plenty. You are plenty. Yes. You don't know how many. Yes, but how? in my mother's side, we are eight. Two have gone, we are six now. Are you married? No. The man coming around your life, I drive him from your life now and forever. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The man that I'm seeing, I drive him in the name of Jesus, the Son Amen. of the Living God. He will go back and you'll be surprised. He will tell you there's no time. He cannot call you. He's busy. Just know that God drove him from your life to save you from trouble. Are you ready for a child now? Talk. You have to be careful. Huh? I send him again in the name of Jesus Christ before he destroys your innocent life. What do you do? I'm Lenny Salum. Huh? I'm Lenny Salum. You are, I'm not here. I'm Lenny Salum. Hairdressing. Yes, sir. I'll have to pray for you. Come. Huh? I place favor on your life in the name of Jesus. May the Lord help you in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but the Lord is showing me a very serious vision. I'm looking at people, but I'm not seeing a face. And this is not the first time I see these kinds of vision. The moment I see this kind of things is a sign that, you know, the devil has just tried to tarnish the glory of people. The Bible says to not let your good be evil spoken of. There, there is a way that you are good, but it's like people continue to misunderstand you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I'm seeing an anointing coming on those people. That veil that covers your face, always putting you in trouble. I tear off that veil now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. Now, please listen very carefully. God is touching everyone, every single one under the sound of my voice. Three things will happen right now. Number one, make sure you are here with your prayer request. If you are not here with it, please pen down. It's an act of faith very quickly. What you're trusting God for, lift it up. Let the ushers have it. Number two, we're going to minister to the sick right now. We'll do it very, very fast. And then I'll pray on it and we'll prophesy open doors for everyone. We have to make this very, very fast. Are we together? While you are doing that, please be praying in the spirit. There are people here who are trusting God for themselves and their families. Please listen. Let's listen outside, inside. Let's listen to the instruction. Please. All those who are standing trusting God for fruit of the womb, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, I want to pray for you myself. Are we together? particularly for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And, but then aside from that, um, overflow one, please listen, listen. From the start of overflow two, that means the end of CGC, and inside here, that's overflow two. Um, overflow three is from the end of CGC down to second equa. Okay, you are overflow two B. Let's call it 2B. Are we together? Then the overflow from the beginning of this fence, down, right down there, we'll call you overflow 2C. Please listen. Then there's overflow 3. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. This is the main auditorium. This is overflow 1. This is overflow 2. Then from this place down to second equis overflow 2B. From that same place down is overflow 2C. So that, so that you would know. If you are trusting God, no matter what overflow for the fruit of the womb, I will pray for you. But then all who are in here, overflow one. I mean overflow here. Please, you are trusting God for healing. Come stand here. Overflow one, come and stand in front of your projector stand. Overflow two, stand in front of your projector stand. Overflow 2A. Please create a space for them there. Overflow 2A, create a space for them there. And then overflow 2C, stand in front of your projector stand. And then overflow 3, you can stand in, um, in front of your projector stand. Those online, connect by faith. And then we'll pray, we'll pray with you. We're going to do this very fast. We thank God there are many hands today. 
and while they minister to you i would like you to believe god for a miracle you are a man of god you are a ministry here open up your heart and connect you are trusting god for the grace for signs wonders make sure that you connect the worship team will be leading us through powerful sessions of worship while we do that and concurrently while that is happening please make sure you submit your prayer request everyone make sure you pen down your prayer request and then we are going to pray on it and let the god of heaven visit us right now in the name of jesus praise the lord um ejimi and promise and bishop manasseh ejimi and promise and bishop manasseh will do overflow three there are quite a number of people there overflow three um benga will do overflow two overflow two pastor alpha and ima you do overflow one um overflow one we need a way of reaching overflow kenny kenny will do overflow to be overflow to be will do overflow to be and then isaac isaac in media you do overflow to see let's make it that way praise the lord father we stand under this corporate grace and we decree and declare in the name of jesus that as we minister to everyone across let your healing power touch deliver set free in the name of jesus do this and be glorified even by the power of the holy spirit please we'll do it very very fast and while you are seated make sure you are agreeing releasing your faith in the name of jesus madam you lift lift your hands you this woman no the one wearing blue and white yes lift your hand i'm seeing oil coming on your head and the lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's lifting you this is what i'm seeing an anointing is coming on you right now and the lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's bringing an oil of gladness upon your life in the name of jesus father let there be miracles signs wonders in the name of jesus christ amen Please stretch your hands to the prayer request. Begin to pray in the spirit. Lord, you are the God that answers prayers. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Pray over these requests. He said, these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. There is a covenant of answered prayer in this place. Lift your voice and pray. Father, I decree and I declare. I prophesy, I proclaim by the spirit of grace that this is a representation of the pain of people a representation of their hunger when the lord turned again the captivity of zion are you praying decree and declare that everything written here in the name of jesus will become a testimony everything written here we invoke the power of the holy ghost upon every request here supernatural deliveries terminations of delay open doors new spiritual dimensions in the name of jesus admissions graduations jobs marriages children restoration advancement promotion in the name that is above all names we decree and declare Make sure you are praying. Make your declaration. These that are brought before the God of all flesh will never, never, never return as a disappointment. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Those online joining us from all over the world, connect in the name of Jesus. From America to Asia, the UK, Canada, everywhere, we decree and declare that your requests are turned into testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen. I want you to understand that this is not a ritual. This is a mystery. Are we together now? There are all kinds of testimonies that have come. I can prophesy and there is so much. I can be limited. I cannot discern everybody's expectation.
but this is a representation of your hunger is a representation of your tears and let me tell you this please don't get familiar with this this is not some some spiritual thing just for the fun of it there is power in what we are doing is guided by understanding is guided by an anointing and God has a covenant is protected by his jealousy in the name of Jesus Paul said for this cause I Paul bow my knees before the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you in the name of Jesus I declare upon you that the Egyptians you see today that you will see them no more forever in the name of Jesus every request here that is a death sentence cancer hiv and any kind of incurable disease we turn it around right now in the name of jesus every impossible situation represented here may the god of wonders arise tonight in the name of jesus and do wonders by the power of the holy ghost for those of you who have submitted these requests on behalf of your loved ones I declare may the angel of God's presence these angels that do not know time and distance may they go to your various homes and to your loved ones and bet supernatural solutions in the name of Jesus Christ we decree and declare that you remain above this challenge forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare over your life, we're entering the second half of the year. It says, revive thy work, O God, in the midst of the year. I decree and declare, every spiritual weariness, every prayerlessness, it dies right now in the name of Jesus. Passion for the things of the spirit like never before. Hunger for spiritual things in the name of Jesus. I declare prayer fire like never before. Let it rest upon your life now. I decree and declare an appetite for God and the things of God. I declare you receive it right now. I pray over your life. Every long-standing issue, you have prayed, you have fasted, you have sought counsel, it has refused to change. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare, by this time next month, return with your testimony. By this time next month, return with your testimony. Please believe it, don't just shout amen, believe it. I come against patterns you have seen it in others you saw it in your father you saw it in your loved ones you saw it in your siblings now it's beginning to happen by the blood of the eternal covenant I cancel every pattern now I cancel every pattern now it works for everybody until it gets to your turn then something happens. You will see it, but you never possess it. I declare right now, that spirit that makes you to see things and never step into it is caused by the God of heaven. Caused by the God of heaven. Everything that was given to you in the realm of the spirit already, I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, this month coming, it must enter your hands I declare that it must enter your hands there are families where is the women that feed the men have you seen such families no matter how hard-working the men are they never feed the family they get up in the morning and play draft from morning till night while the women go to fend, it's an anomaly. I declare by the Spirit of God, I'm praying for the men now. The grace for establishment and the grace to be satisfied early. Receive that anointing right now. He 
says, satisfy me early. I'm saying it again. Everybody here who is a man, and it looks like the devil wants you to depend on people for the rest of your life. I decree and declare, like Jacob, Laban must let you go in the name of Jesus. I pray for every Mordecai here. You have been good to others. You have been good to kings. Your records have been written, but you have not been rewarded. In this season, by the Spirit of God, we open a book of remembrance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Anyone here called jobless by the God of heaven, between now and the next three months, like the ark of God in the house of Oben Edom, I decree and declare jobs that will be consolations to your years of pain. May my God give it to you. Every dying business, hear the word of the Lord. I don't care what has happened by the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. I speak to you, come back to life now. Come back to life now. Everyone who is in ministry here, no matter what level there are dimensions, I pray for you. You will go back to your various churches, fellowships and assemblies and a dimension of fire, a dimension of insight you have never seen, receive in the name of Jesus. Everyone here called barren by the God of heaven, in the name of Jesus, according to the time of life, return with your children. These are not empty prophecies. Believe them. They are backed up by the jealousy of God. They will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. I don't know where the helpers of your destiny are. But in the name of Jesus, every man who must arise in this season for your sake to favor you wherever they are around this globe by the spirit of grace i call them to your life now i call them to your life now the bible says that strangers shall feed your flock it says your gates shall be open continually it shall not be shut day nor night that you will receive the forces of the Gentiles people you do not know I compel them to be interested in your lifting in the name of Jesus Christ I prayed a prayer like this one time and one of us God just opened a door and a bank met him to sell a property for them worth 450 million naira. Listen, it doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. There is the creative dimension of prophecy that can order things in your life. Every area of struggle. I stand by the God of heaven who is called Ebenezer, the God of Jeshurun. In the name of Jesus, receive help from the Lord. I want to pray for people who have ideas and have projects but it seems to never go out of the book you have ideas you have projects it's just to connect you with somebody who has the interest nobody helps you on their own they are called by prophecy in the name of Jesus right now I connect your ideas to your helpers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I forgot to pray for those who are in various institutions writing their exams. I know that many people had started their exams. Some have written. And the honest truth is that some of you have written nonsense. You need the mercy of God. In the name that is above all names. Much more than what you have written. In the name of Jesus. 
may the mercy of God show up in your exam. There is a dimension of finances that comes by prophecy. Please pay attention. Our time is gone, but I want to speak this into your life. There are people who are not very smart. The prophetic dimension is not a license to not be valuable. The prophetic dimension is a system of advantage to bridge tragedy while you learn. It's a system of God's mercy. It would be foolish to believe that wealth is only by principles. There are laws and there are irrefutable principles that make for the foundation. But there is the ordinance of prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the God who has helped me by His grace, the God who has helped this ministry, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit between now and the end of July may your finances turn around in a way that will surprise you may your finances turn around in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are under any kind of project building project whatever it is the hand that started that project is the same hand that must finish that project in the name of jesus christ everyone here due for promotion but has been kept because of the wickedness and the sentiments of men go back into your next level in the mighty name of jesus christ finally i want to pray for you honor is the ability to discern to celebrate and to reward a man for his uniqueness it's not enough for your value to be discerned you must live a rewarded life you will be frustrated if you do not live a rewarded life i pray for you the eyes that can perceive and can discern your value i connect you to those eyes in the name of jesus any pit you have found yourself in i must pray this financially whatever it is you have found yourself in a situation where only god can bring you out may that god you believe in bring you out of it now in the name of jesus finally i want to prophesy again the grace for this year's prophetic word the Lord declared that it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Every part of that prophecy that is yet to speak in your life, by the force of right words and by the power of the, no, the name that is above all names, I declare to you, may your life experience extraordinary fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ may you return with testimonies some of you this night before you get to your homes your phones you will see text messages that are full of wonders in the name of Jesus Christ father we give you all the praise we bless you because you have honored this house you have made it a place of answers you have made it a place of strange testimonies. Let everything that you have done tonight by your spirit return as testimonies. Let it not just be a ceremony. In the name of Jesus, we declare by the spirit of the Christ, testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, very quickly, I will make an altar call and then we'll take a few very important announcements and we're done. I apologize, our time is gone. You are here in this place. Please, let's minimize movement, especially outside. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've not given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to encounter his salvation and his mercy. Please listen. 
or you are here you are saying man of god i've seen the wonders i once gave my heart to the lord but as it is right now i need mercy i need grace i need to start afresh you are here inside overflow one two three and all the other annexes i want to give you five minutes you want to make it right with jesus wherever you are i want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand right here it will be my joy to lead you to jesus christ don't wait for someone be the first i'll count one to five wherever you are please start running clear the way for them please outside one quickly quickly please if you're coming run quickly run to jesus two win that war today win that war today win that war today the bible says in the day that you hear his voice do not harden your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness three someone is still coming apostle i'm not sure if i'm born again or not join them very quickly join them very quickly i expect people to come from outside please clear the way for those coming from outside clear the way for those coming from outside overflow one two three if you're coming don't be sluggish run very quickly we're out of time run quickly run quickly we're out of time apostle i want to come but i'm ashamed and afraid of my colleagues and contemporaries jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men i will be ashamed of you before my father come quickly come quickly come quickly come quickly give them a big god bless you whilst they come takes a lot of courage but win that war young and old run to jesus the bible says ye must be born again hallelujah praise the lord i want to salute all of you thank you so much for coming to make this decision lift your right hand high to heaven and say this after me you're not reciting a poem this is from the depth of your heart jesus is here say after me lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i have seen your wonders and i declare that i need you this night i declare that you are my lord you are my savior you are my king i receive your life i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life i am a child of god i'm changed forever amen keep your hands lifted jesus i present to you the ones you died for i thank you because when you hung on that cross they were worth your blood they were worth the tears they were worth the death i pray in the name of jesus according to scripture your sins are forgiven and the grace to walk in victory is released upon you right now in the name of jesus i decree and declare forever you go from glory to glory even by the spirit of god everything that is not of god i come against it right now the grace to live victorious is released upon you from today you go forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus christ amen and amen i congratulate you i salute you very quickly everyone in concert i want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands and you will have to dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.